Darts everyone, and here we are. It is Pro Tour Live for Players Championship Night in Barnsley. And thank you very much for joining us. I'm Phil Bars flying solo at the moment, but Lee and Gob will be in and out across the afternoon. So, chat room, whilst I'm on my own, you are going to have to keep us company. And been a busy morning. I've just seen glimpses of the draw. One word brutal. Oh my days, there is some absolute belters going on on the pro tour today but come and say hi um, as well we will keep you fully loaded throughout the day in Barnsley and we'll keep you up to date with the challenge tour results as well we won't have them live because we are concentrating on the pro tour but we'll keep you up to speed with what is going on hope you've had a great Friday so far and it's only just getting started plenty of action plenty of darting action um, Lakeside starts tomorrow as well. It's a busy, busy weekend across all forms. But like we said, come and say hi in the chat room. A few in early as always. Daniel, James, Benita, hope you are all good. Uh, yeah, Daniel, it's a two o'clock start today because the Premier League boys had to get there. Uh, back to 12 o'clock tomorrow and Sunday, but two o'clock start today. Uh, all good, Pete, mate. All good. Um, whilst we're waiting for the Pro Tour to kick into life, um, we'll just give you a quick roundup of the Challenge Tour. One semi-final underway. Scott Marsh is 4-1 up on Michael Flynn. And the man of the moment, Scott Williams, is in the other semi-final. Another good weekend with the absentees. He could pretty much... Gets his tour card and World Championship spot sorted. Very interesting chat room. Let me know what you think. A lot of players that are playing in the WDF World Championships have gone to Germany. Good or bad? Let us know what you think. Um, good runs for Nathan Gerben. He got he is in the semi-final and he will play the winner of uh, Michael Flynn and Scott Marsh. That one is there. So my fault. Um put this one up a second until the pro tour starts. So there we go. We'll put it up as a live match as well. Or will we? Is it about to end? Uh, yeah, it's still a little bit of legs in it. Um, so, yeah, we were saying Pro Tour last night. What has everyone thought halfway through the new Premier League? Fan or not? You know, see the conclusion of the Scott Marsh game. Uh, hi from Belgium. How you doing, mate? Hope you are good.
just put a little poll up. Um, James, I agree to a point. I love the fact that there is a nightly winner, but I just think it's getting a little bit tedious now, the same eight. I'm not convinced. Look, I, I love the format of um, a nightly winner and, and every game matters in, in that respect, but I'm getting a little bit bored of the, the same eight. Um, it's an interesting one. It, it's split opinions so far. Uh, how we doing, Philip? Hope you are good. Um, Curtis, yeah, no, that's cool. I was going to say, um, Jack and Lee will be dropping in and out across the afternoon. So I'm flying solo for a bit, but we have you covered with everything here at the Pro Tour. And we're just keeping an eye on the Challenge Tour until the Pro Tour starts. Um, like we were saying, is it a good idea? I get it's match practice for some of these players at Lakeside. Um, all the tr the travel in and out. Is it a good thing? I don't know. Um, the draws are getting boring. The old format for me. Yep. Like I say, I, I prefer the format. I just wish there was more players or more variety than, than the eight we've got. It's just it's just missing something for, for me. That's why we put a cheeky little poll up whilst we get going. I would say two o'clock start in Barnsley. Um, and for those that haven't seen it yet, it is absolutely brutal this draw so um board one gezi has a buy so there are there is a hole um board two it's not too bad i've seen worse boards uh martin schindler scott mitchell probably the pick of the ties there um absolutely philip it, it's carnage absolute carnage um chizzy against luke peters um glenn darren against tony martinez on board three um peter wright david evans on board number five james wade jamie hughes matt campbell jermaine watamina christopher tyski jose de Souza, and steve beaton jeff smith board six that's a it's a tasty little one but the bottom half is definitely, definitely stacked. Um, MBG, he has Jimi Hendrix on board nine. Then Ted Evans, John Michael, Simon Whitlock, Mike Decker, Martin Lukeman, Mike Kyvenhoven. He's on a collision course with Johnny Clayton. If they both win their board, Johnny Clayton has an all Welsh derby with Jim Williams. Tough little encounter. Board 11, Michael Smith against Gary Anderson in round one. Ouch. Um, Gabriel Clemens, Rusty Jake, Cameron Menzies, Boris Kirchmar, um, Vincent Van der Bort, Neil Zonneveld on board 13. Board 14, Daryl Gurney, Andy Bolton, um, Gert DeVos, John O'Shea, Nathan Aspinall, Raymond Van Barneveld in round number one. Flipping ouch. There is some absolute brutals. Uh, sorry, I'm watching Rene Sullivan and, and Neil Robertson. It's 2 1 to the Rocket Avro. Love that. Look, I'm not going to lie. I'm a huge casual snooker fan. I love Ronnie and I love Judd Trump. The others bore me a little bit. But when the snooker's like that, not bad. Um. Board 16, Luke Humphreys, Jack May, Mittal, Mikhail Unterbuchner against Christoph Kachuk, Ross Smith, Andrew Gilding, John Henderson against Louis Williams. Do you fancy, if you're Luke Humphreys, you fancy your chances of coming through that board. So, so yeah, some absolute brutal ties in the Pro Tour. Um, only 127 there, the number one seed, the Iceman. Has the buy. 
But Scott Marsh now, can he put this one to bed? It's It's been scrappy, but... He does. So that is that. We'll flip it. And we'll get Scott Williams on. Um, Anderson, Smith, and Menzies all on stream too. That's what we like to hear, Phil. That's superb. At times, their streaming boards have been questioned, but you can't question this one, can you? First up on the stream, Michael Smith, Gary Anderson. Gary Anderson wasn't at the races last night. And Scott Williams is in control of his semi final. Uh, James says it's missing the 105 plus averages to Timmy 90 so far. Yeah, Timmy 90s and too many, too many sub 90s as well for me, James. Yeah, it's too too many too many sub 90s. Um, what were we about 10 minutes away from the action? So we will keep an eye on the pro tour and the challenge tour until then. I'm going to set the streaming boards up on my laptop as well, close some windows. As, as everyone knows, I'm, um, I'm one for having loads of windows open. No, the 141, seven, the 1302, it was class from Gary, though. Yeah, it was close, but look, we're not seeing that enough. We'll, we'll, we'll see flashes of genius from Ando, and then it just drops off. Um, Sam, yeah, no, no, I, I like the format of it's a knockout every week. We were saying this earlier. It's just how you incorporate more players into this format. Um, so it's that's the don't make the same mistake I did, but that, that that's the thing for me. It's it's how you can get more players in in the format because for me, it is getting a little bit stale in terms of just the same eight every week. Uh, the ferret was back to his best last night. Yeah, he was hundred um, percent. Yeah, look, he, then he said in his um, post match as well that he needed that he. He was just lacking something, but he was he was top class, the ferret last night. How are we doing, Adrian? Hope you are well. I'm just closing down kind of my horrendous tabs that I've got open. Um, Phil Hayden Press. Um, Suzuki, yeah, look, I think Suzuki's played really, really well this week. Um, she only got in on Monday, so there is a little bit of jet lag, but that should be gone by the time Lakeside starts. And look, it's just a shame that probably Makura and Bo are going to play in the second round. Criminal should be the final. But Makura not being seeded has just killed it. TV here. Um, uh, thanks for the coverage. These events. Uh, yes, Daniel, we, we will be covering the WDF as well. Um, so Gob will be hosting the stream tomorrow and Sunday. I'll be at Lakeside for those two days. 
then Boise will be taking over from me at Lakeside doing all the post matches. And then I'll be at the Premier League in Leeds and then back for the streams next week. So we've had, we've had to do a bit of a bit of juggling, um, but we've got everything covered for you. Am I surprised it's taking place? Uh, if I'm being honest, yes, I am. Um, and I know that everyone is saying the right things, but let, let's wait and see. Um, I know that little Richard and, and the, the team behind it have been trying everything and but look, ticket sales are only, I think it's 19%, maybe 20%. Um, am I surprised it's still going on? Yes, I am. Because um, commercially, financially, it's not viable. Um, yeah, maybe, Lee. The, the problem is with that is people buy tickets expecting to see the best players at the best venues. This isn't meant to sound the way it probably does, but the tickets go on sale before you know the lineup. But you'll pretty much guess it, or you're pretty much thinking that you're going to see the world's best. And if they separate the world's best, you buy a ticket for Newcastle, you might get MBG and Peter Wright as your two headliners. Um, and then if you buy a ticket for Nottingham, you may get James Wade and Johnny Clayton. So if, you, if you're an MVG fan, you've bought a ticket and you're not going to see him, are you going to be happy? Are you going to go again? Maybe not. Um, Gob's in the chat room. We'll see you later, mate. Um, Jack says, what board is Adrian Lewis on? Jackpot is on board 15 with Rob Cross. Why is Sudovic not playing? Uh, I don't know, but I'm guessing he just wants a weekend off. Would you be more interested in the Pro Tour weekend or the WDFR Championship? Um, Philip, everyone knows my answer to that one. Me, personally, I'm more interested in the Pro Tour. Um, I just, I'm not excited about the WDF World Championship. I'm not hiding the facts. Look, they've all done great to get there, um, but it lacks, it's lacking household names, it's lacking excitement. Um, for me, the, the the star name in the tournament, and he is an all-time great, but he's 65 years old. There's no excitement around the rest of it. Um, for me, Wolfie is the, 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 the star name, the sprinkling of star dust. Look, the others can play, but they haven't got that profile that Martin Adams has got. Um, so for me, all about the Pro Tours. Um, and look, honestly, whoever wins it, can they really look themselves deep down and call themselves a world champion? Not for me. All right. Can you ever please the TV fans in the way? No, look, uh, Sam, the fans in the arena love the Premier League, but it's, it's getting stale for the fans at home, I feel. Look, the, the fans in the arena, it goes down amazingly well. Rank would Martin Allen's be in the PDC? Um, look, right now he wouldn't be that high. Look, he's 65 years old, picks and chooses. But in his prime, I think he would have won titles in the PDC. Yeah, co completely, Philip. Um, look, and that's not the the players' fault or the organisation's fault. Um, there hasn't been. 
there hasn't been enough darts pre-pandemic. I just feel this World Championship has been bodged together almost with part of the rankings from pre-pandemic carrying this over, carrying that over. Um, it's just not for me. Set up, ready to go. Just waiting for them to go live. Uh, Tam says, I personally don't think it's getting stale. I think it's definitely have the potential. Of, uh, yeah, no, no, it's each their own. Hundred percent. That I'm just saying that that's the way the way I felt about it. But I'm, I'm lucky enough to be in the venue every week, so it's exciting for for those. But I see across social media the last couple of weeks just creeping in oh this game again well this game again and, and so on um does it take away a little bit of the gloss like when these players meet in big tv tournaments um peter wright against johnny clayton a huge game two informed players playing the match play quarter final but if we've seen it nine weeks out of 17 on, on the premier league does it have the same gloss i don't know Um, yeah, the, the seedings were done from, was it the draw was done in November? Uh, early, yeah, but Ronnie's on fire. Yeah, so everyone's saying, Ronnie O'Sullivan absolutely ripping it up in the snooker. Am I watching the World Cup draw later? Yeah, maybe. Um, not really a fan of international football anymore. Um, in my younger day, followed England around for five, six years, home and away. But not really a fan of, of Gareth Southgate personally. I um, wasn't a fan of Roy Hodgson, that's for sure, and sort of like switched off when when that happened. Rooting for Nathan Gervin. Yeah, no, that super player, Nathan. Of course, we've seen him in the live league as well. But... Pro Tour is about to go live. How are we doing, Laura? Team Joker is in the house. Uh, Kenneth and Maisie just made it in from school. Good work. Uh, yeah, Group C has just finished in the live league as well. So perfect timing. Anyone that is joining us from the live league. There we have it. First game is underway in Barnsley. And there they go. The iPads are clicking away. And we need a reaction from MVG from last night. Wasn't great. Um, so let's see how he gets on against Jimi Hendrix. Um Anyone joining us from the live league member, come and say hi. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel and drop us a like as well. 
We much appreciate all your support. Um, who do I reckon will win today? Um, good question. Um, let me. I've got a name in mind, but first of all, I want to have a look at. And uh, Smith is underway. Gary Anderson using the same darts as yesterday. I was wondering if we'd see a dart change, perhaps, but no. Um, do you know why Michael Mango isn't playing Sunday? Uh, yep, spoke to him last night. He's entered the two, but it's his little boy's birthday today. So he's playing today, playing tomorrow, then going home to spend some few days with the family. I think they've got doing something for little Mike's birthday as well. Um, just a couple of days at home before the Premier League goes again. Um, that, that's the only reason he's not playing on the Sunday, mate. Uh, afternoon, Darts Guru. Hope you are well. Right, who do I think is going to win today? John Henderson, David Evans will beat Peter Wright. A stretch has started well. I am going for Christopher Dobie. Interesting as well. Gary's gone back to almost the old world championship setup. The darts slightly different. I still think he's using the code dart. But we've got the white and blue stems and the classic blue Gary Anderson flights. Christoph Ratajski gets underway and it's Jose Justicia. Gurney and Jabot. Yeah, no, I don't dislike them either, James. Um, we saw real signs from Gurney um, over the last few tournaments and Jackpot looked good at his last one. So, yeah, I, I can fully... Uh, Fully get on board with those picks, mate. What's the best April Fools you've ever heard about? Mm. I don't know. I'll have a, I'll have a think. Um. Just seeing board 14. I felt like, yeah, unreal. All right, Sam, most of them travelled last night. But not all. But most, most went last night. We have a Johnny Clayton. Yeah, look, Maferri, if he can continue from that vein of form that he had yesterday. He will be hard to beat. How are we doing, Simon? Hope you are well. Gando, 2-0 up on Bully Boy on stream number two. Remember, these games are live on PDC TV. There's Jose Justicia breaks. The Ratajski throw. MVG faffing around on doubles here. Will he pay in our feature game? Um, yes. Um, yes, Philip, it was um, the reason. It's back to 12 o'clock tomorrow and Sunday. 
but it's obviously it's not just the, the players, it's some of the officials as well that were at the, the Premier League last night um, and everything like that. The, the rigging guys as well, they still have to rig stuff up and everything. So, yeah, just the, the Premier League was the reason it's a later start today. Uh, afternoon, David. Hope you are well. Uh, Florian Hempel levels up against Rob Cross. Again, man, Florian Hempel needs a good run. Not seen the blistering form of last year so far. Um, Josh Rock, 2-1 up on Dirk Van Dijvenboda. Uh, yeah, Johnny Clayton did go up, as I predicted he would. We both did well. We, we both predicted the the runner up. Small bet on Schindler and Rock. They yeah, look two solid, solid picks to to have a go. I said, half of the players change their throwing styles. The most throw the same for 10 plus years. Um, look, there, there'll always be subtle changes to your throw over time. Um, the habits creep in um, and, and things start to feel a little bit more comfortable. We're just talking about subtle subtle changes to, to your throw. You think Michael Van Gogh used to throw pinky up, now it's tucked in. Uh, Gary Anderson's throw fundamentally the same, but there's just a, a li little setting point now that never used to be. Um, Barney's um, finger used to used to go like around the barrel. Now it's just slightly up. So throws change naturally over time, but people like Martin Schindler that went away and made wholesale changes to his throw for the better because they were fundamentally wrong. Are a little different. If you've got a, if you've got a fundamentally sound throw, you'll you'll subconsciously make little tweaks here and there naturally. Ratajski is having a bit of a stinker. They're only averaging seventy seven. Damon Hetta, 3-1 up on Steve Lennon, both averaging mid-90s. Andy Bolton, 3-1 up on Daryl Gurney, both averaging well over the ton mark there. And Jose Justicia is now 3-0 up on Christoph Ratajski, averaging What's on the stream? We get a bit of a fist pump from Double J. Jose Justicia. Peter Wright threw one up on David Evans. Both tidy averages. Brendan Doan averaging 101. Three one up on Jason Heaver. Rockstar Joe Cullen, 3-1 down to Darren Penhorn on board seven. Um, Liam says Humphreys hasn't been on a crazy run for a while. Now he's potentially due one. As you see, she's not yet. How are we all doing? Well, I'm going to end that part. It was just a cheeky little 
cheeky little one to see where we were until we actually get in the way. We'll get another poll going shortly. We love a poll here. Um, Daryl Gurney in a world of trouble, 4 1 behind against Andy Bolton. As Ando rattles in a 180 against Bully Boy. Brendan Dolan, this is much better from the history maker. Again, struggled a little bit of late. MVG 4 2 up, averaging 102. Gary Anderson averaging 104. Where was this yesterday, Gando? Jose Justicia is running riot on the other stream board. Again. Big, big shadows on the boards today. Not liking the, the lighting situation on the Pro Tour at the moment. Big shadows on both boards. Uh, how are we doing, Andrew? Hope you are well. Ryan Sell. Welcome to the chat room, Gob. Everyone vote no. Um, what else have we got? David Evans has one back against Peter Wright. Um, Christoph Ratajski does have a leg on the board. Uh, yep, Jason, how did you, how did you guess? <laughs> and on board 11, Big, big break of throw. Gary Anderson has broken the Michael Smith. Throw leads. 5-3, one away. <laughs> Is there a way to report a poll? If not, there should be, shouldn't there, Dan? Joe Cullen, back level at three apiece. He trailed 3-1. Also, Jim Williams leads Johnny Clayton. 3-2 in that one. Uh, Luke Humphreys on the verge of beating Jack Main. He leads 5-2. Jack Main only averaging 84. It looks like it's going to be an early exit for him. Nice to see. Like Brendan Dolan, the history maker, smashing it up in the opening round, averaging near on a ton. 5-1 up. Super stuff from him. But... All eyes. Oh, Michael Smith instantly breaks back. This one not done yet. Uh, Danny, yep. Yeah, he did get a bye into the opening. I'm oh, sorry, to the second round as the number one seed. Only 127 players in Barnsley. Uh, Smith pinned double nine to level it up. Is the Ratajski comeback on? Trailed 4-0. One back-to-back -back legs. Has the Polish Eagle. Is he about to soar? God, that shadow is horrific on board one.
and Jim Williams, I think, will have a very, very good year. Now, look, he's, cap he's capable. And first result is Jose de Souza beating Ian White 6 1, 97 87 average for Jose, only 8903 for Diamond White. Also, Brendan Dolan joins the Portuguese man of scores in the last 64, a 6 1 win over Jason Heaver. Cool. That's our pleasure, mate. It's our pleasure. And Gary Anderson wraps up a 6-4 victory over Bully Boy Michael Smith. Um, Luke Humphreys does get over the line against Jack Main 6-3. And we have our first bagel of the day as well. Dimitri Vandenberg 6-0 over John Brand. John only averaging 76. Uh, Dimitri wasn't great either, 85, but enough to get the job done. Dirk van Dijvenboda is making a little bit of a comeback here. Josh Rock still one away, but Dirk back to 5-4. In our feature game, this one, two, seven, and game may have to go for Jimi Hendrix, or it will be MVG into the last 64, and it does go one, two, seven, and game. Uh, our pleasure, John. Glad you are watching Dan Under, and we're pleased the darts is coming back. The World Series is on. I was chatting to some of the PDC lads about New York. And by the sounds of it, we're going to have a full week of content to bring you as well. Different stuff from round and about the Big Apple. Can't wait. Um, Gary says, um, Jack says, Gary, 104 average. Pity can't bring that consistently. Yeah, that, that's the issue at, at the moment. Josh Rock gets the job done. 6-4 over Dirk van Dijvenboda. And what a last leg. 177, ton 180, 44 in three. That'll do nicely, young man. Don't get gob started on this subject. But Josh Rock into the last 64. Uh, Steve Lennon has battled back. He is now four apiece with Damon Hetter. Damon Hetter only averaging 89. It's not the Damon Hetter that we've seen recently. Uh, the Joker, John O'Shea, getting underway against Gert DeVos, which we will put as our feature game next. Vincent van der Voort underway and Cameron Menzies on the stream against Big Bad Boris. Boris tells you it's Tuesday. I agree with him. It's Tuesday. Uh, MVG gets over the line. Decent last leg as well. Cheeky little 13 data. Dan, I'm with you, and I hope so as well. I hope so. There we have Joker against Get the Voss, the wily old fox. Heta in front again. Um, Max Hop may not be there then, Sam. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't seen his name either, so maybe not.
Um, Richie Burnett hasn't played yet, Dean. The original Prince of Wales will be due out shortly. Uh, yeah, hot play suit up. There you go. Cameron Menzies warming up for the lakeside here. Just love the Cameron Menzies throw. Just looks so good. So, John O'Shea wants 44 to break in the opener. He can't. Missed opportunity for the Joker. Get DeVos looking at 52 for a hold and throw. And it does go. Yep, Jose Justicia will be kicking himself. Was 4-0 to the good on stream board one. And now it's four apiece. Ratowski is playing considerably better than what he was. Peter Wright wraps up a 6-3 victory over David Evans. Uh, I like the Alan Searle interview. Yeah, it was good. So was the um, Simon Whitlock one was really good as well. Um, Eddie Lovely is sending us to a noble on board 12, five apiece with Orion Searle, Vincent van der Voort averaging 111. He's tuning it up on Neil Zonneveld. Uh, Fox never quits. Um, I know I do an annual darts tournament with my dad who passed away two years ago. We have around 25 family members that range um, talent from last year. Last year, best two in the prelim. Yeah, not good, mate. Um, how did your best thing to see 25 to stop this happening? Um, yeah, if, if, you've, if you've got no real way to base it on, mate, that's as good as good as any. But huge, huge casualty. The rock star Joe Cullen departs in round one, being 6-5 by Darren Penhorn. Cullen averaged 96. Didn't play badly. Menzies raced into a 2-0 lead on the stream. Warming up, Darren Webster against John Worsley. And then Brian Roman against Danny Bagish. And Christoph Ratajski has won six on the spin. He trailed Jose Justicia 4-0. But the Polish Eagle has completely spun that game around. How are we doing? Um, Tasmania, all good. Rob Cross does get over the line in the last lift side against Florian Hempel. And which is hi from New Zealand. Pleasure to have you all from the Oceanic region joining us on our stream. It's great to have you all involved. Also, Gert Nenches has beaten Luke Woodhouse in the last leg decider. Uh, our feature game is on throw still. 2-1, get the boss. Cameron Menzies, three up. It's not a classic. But doing enough at the moment is Cammy. Uh, Chris.
Christoph Kachuk one up against Mikhail Unterbuchner. He's had a bit of a stinker in the first leg, but we'll forgive him. Ted Everts has taken the opener against John Michael. Ricky Evans, 2 1 up on Scott Waite, averaging a ton. Warming up as well. We've got Steve Beaton against Jeff Smith. Huge game for both. But I was on the stream. Both of them in a little bit of danger at the wrong end of the 64. Uh, it says, um, hello from Germany. What is it with Schindler and Clemens? Um, look, Martin Schindler's playing very, very well right now. We, we said it last time that um, he's, he's gone back. He's done a lot of work on his action. And his action looks superb right now. Uh, Clemens is, is doing enough in games, but not killing him off. For me, he's having opportunities. Um, John O'Shea does level it up at two apiece. That is a hold and throw. Glenn Durrant has taken the opener against Tony Martinez. And up, pop, down. Moran does. I think the whole darting world just wants Glenn Durrant to win. I'll tell you what, John O'Shea is forging a break opportunity. Come back to that in a minute. Um... Fox says, I don't want to embarrass myself in local leagues. Do you think I could? Uh, never worry about embarrassing yourselves, mate. Embarrassing yourself, mate. Everyone has to start playing competitive darts somewhere. Uh, your local leagues is as good a place as any, mate. Just if you enjoy playing, just go and do it. Um, look, ev everyone has to start somewhere, mate. So if you enjoy playing, just go and do it and sod what anyone else thinks. Right, big moments here on our feature game. If this 128 doesn't go, and it doesn't, so John O'Shea has another opportunity to break the Gert DeVos throw. Looks at 56, and this time the opportunity is gobbled up by the Joker. He leads 3 2, averaging 94. Very solid darts from John O'Shea. Ted Everts over the ton average. He's 3 0 up on John Michael, the Greek plate thrower. Good on you. Super stuff from the Joker as he looks to ram home the advantage. T's up 24. How are we doing? When we start, hope you are well. See, look, God misses the board. Um, Dan says, I played my first game in the league this year. Um, yeah, exactly. Warm and welcome. Look. Anyone that enjoys playing, just, just get down and play. Uh, yeah, Gob will be on after he finishes work. Um, Boise will be on as well for a bit as well this afternoon. But yeah, Gob, once he's done, because remember, through till about. 7 45 8 p.m this evening depending on how long these got take to get the job done john o'shea 4-2 to the good Been 
Vincent van der Voort level with nils on about three apiece. Tidy game, both averaging 95 in this one. Um, Gert de Vos looking as if he's going to hold and get one back. But he remember, he's a breakdown to John O'Shea. Nathan Rafferty takes the opener against George Killington. Cameron Menzies averaging 93. And he's 5-1 up. Look, if Cameron Menzies can average 93 across the WDF World Championship, more than likely wins it. Now, tournament average of that. I mean, you fancy his chances. Ricky Evans on the hill, 5-2 up against Scott Waits. Thank you very much, Fox. It's our pleasure for having you all along. Uh, Gert DeVos does hold, but John O'Shea now throwing, and this would put him on the hill. What he'd give for 12 to 15 dark leg on throw. Uh, Barry Van Peer, Ross Montgomery underway. Uh, Barry Keane and Manners Rasma underway on board one. Maddars has taken the opening leg. Uh, Roby John, one up on Ricardo Petresco. Um, George, yes, John Brown, unfortunately, lost to Dimitri Vandenberg. Vincent Vandervoort back in front. Uh, now, the WDF World Championships is on Eurosport Quest and Discovery across the next week. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you there, Johnny. Remember, everyone, it's also WrestleMania weekend. Cameron Menzies gets the job done. 6-2 up. God, WrestleMania will do millions of views this weekend, and you know it. Oh, big moments on board 14. Gert the Voss has broken back. We're now four apiece. And it is best of three between these two now. Um, I haven't looked at the price for Mania, to be fair. But I will be participating, obviously. Have we got Ross Montgomery has taken the opener against Barry Van Pier? Uh, King Barry levels it up at one apiece. Steve West has a leg on the ball against Adam Gowlas. Uh, yeah, absolutely, Jeff. Um, Nathan says, Do we know about the Grand Slam this year? Uh, do we know what, mate? Just imagine Dan Simpson sat watching the stream right now. Uh, Vincent van der Voort, 5-3 up. John O'Shea, 104 to break again. Oh, 
WrestleMania dream match. What one that hasn't happened that I'd like to have seen? Oh, I would have loved to have seen CM Punk against Bret Hart. Um, so Gert DeVos has missed big moments here. John O'Shea looking at double 10 to go within one. And this is a break of throw. Huge moments here. And it goes last eye in hand. The Joker is within one of Gert DeVos. Um... Uh, Sam says, people have their opinions. Some are harsh on the WDF, but it doesn't matter if it's the PDC or WDF being a world champion. You know, I I'm completely disagree with you there, Sam. I'm not in that camp at all. If the WDF labels it as the amateur world championship, I can fully get on board with that. But just the, dark, the WDF as a world championship on its own, I can't, unfortunately. Is any WDF players going to be asked? Um, I don't know, but I very much doubt it. Um, Jeff Smith putting Steve Beaton to the sword at the moment. 3-1, Steve Beaton only averaging 77 is this the end of the great man at the top level? Is this? Maybe. But John O'Shea, 56 to win it. Gert DeVos is on a two data. So this has to go, and it does go. John O'Shea is into the last 64. A 6-4 win over Gert DeVos, averaging 92 and a bit. Solid, solid stuff from the Joker. All right, I'm going to put this one on now as well to keep. Oh, oh what an idiot! My fault. I just pressed the wrong button. Um, two seconds. Let me um resort my. We'll have a feature game, or well, the feature games up there in a second, but I need to sort something out in the background. Um, however, it's warming up, and it is an absolute belter coming up next. Keep doing that. Raymond Van Barneveld will play Nathan Aspinall. Hold on to your hats. It's going to be an absolute belter. Uh, get back to your questions in a minute, folks. I'm just tidying up something in the back end here.
Uh, afternoon, Andrew. Hope you are good. Uh, yep, yeah, um, Lee and Gob will both be on at some point in the afternoon, mate. So I've got to recrop something. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, what percentage of the WDF ticket sales at? 19, 20%, I believe. Why is there no Welsh, Scottish, and England players like in the? Have I missed part, the first part of the question? Um, I don't know. Sorry. Um, it's just there used to be in the old BDO setup. Um, right, well, I'm going to the chat room, so I've sorted that all out now. Come on, the silence, everyone does it, so yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, Lee will be here in about half an hour ish. Uh, I'm just going to switch the feature game around. So I was waiting for this one to go live because this deserves a feature match. George Killington has defeated Nathan Rafferty and Barney and Aspinall are underway. This should be absolute genius. We have, Ralph, we sounded the alarm. Um, Dan, I'm not going to say anything on the matter until the players have been paid. Oh, you lot. Have you, have you missed it? We've done the alarm once. Shall I? Shall I? Oh, go on then. That good, it deserved it a second time. Uh, Adam Gowlas, 5 3 up on Steve West. Madders Rasma is on the hill against Barry Keane. Keane only averaging 89. That's not the standards we've seen from him. Also, in the Challenge Tour update, Scott Williams has taken a giant leap. He has won another Pro Tour, another Challenge Tour title. Um, James Wade is up next against Jamie Hughes on the stream board after uh, Steve Beaton and Jeff Smith. Why isn't this game on the stream board? Yeah, your guess is as good as mine, John. Which boards are streamed? So it is board number...
Board number six and board number 11 in the opening round. Rusty Jake, 4-1 up on Gabriel Clemens at the moment. Uh, Jason, yeah, I'm good, mate. No, Lee will be here in about half an hour. Um, and then God will be on as well. Uh, Darius Lavanowskis has been Adam Hunt, 6-3. And uh, the other RJR, Roby John, 6-2 winner over Ricardo Petresco. Aspinall breaks back and then starts with a max. <laughs> Love that. Love that, Big John. Not getting excited yet. Not getting excited yet. I can only imagine what Dan's feeling like at the moment. Come on. I think everyone, and I mean everyone, is cheering this one on. It probably won't be this leg because Martinez, Martinez has started like an absolute train, but it will only be a hold and throw. Uh, both Lee and Jack will be on Daniel this afternoon. Um, Peter Wright's won his opening round game. Big David Evans, 6-3. Menzies against Anderson in round two will be a belter. This is the leg. Oh, Martinez is fabulous. Max, no. And on the stream, board one, both, it looks as if, has it finished? It has. Both Steve Beaton and Jeff Smith were complaining about the lights on the stream. Yeah, just seeing it, um, just seeing it, Philip, it's... I said earlier that the, the lighting's been horrific. Oh, Buzz has found a maximum, but will he get a go? Oh, no, it can't happen, can it? Uh, 
Um, there's only two streaming boards, John. Um, and they are on PDC TV. Uh, Rob Cross is still in. Literally, the, the, the last... The last three legs from Tony Martinez have been absolutely insane. Where's he pulled this from? Uh, Daniel, the late start is because of the Premier League last night. The Premier League lads had to get there. Back to 12 o'clock tomorrow. We're all gripped, we're all glued to this noble leg. Come on, Dazza. Uh, what time did it start today? No, it started at two today, um, Jason. Big moments here. Glenn Durrant finds a 140 and is down to a finish first in this noble leg. Martinez finds a 140 himself to leave 70, but Durrant 120 to win it. Just go yellow. Just go yellow. Yes! Get in there. Glenn Durrant checks out 120 to win it in a noble leg. Get in. That takes some stones as well. 120 after your opponent is at a 140 to leave 70. That's, that's vintage Glenn Durrant. We all know it's still there. And the chat room goes berserk. A lot of does a love. Superb. <laughs> oh, hopefully. <laughs> Get yourself a parvo, Dan. Um, right. A bit carried away there. Um, where were we? Chris Doby needs Mickey Mansell. 2-1. And in, in, in all that, my fault, not been following it because I was glued on Dazza. 
Barney has spun it around. He was 3 2 behind today for Aspinall. Barney is on the cusp here. Martin Schindler averaging a ton against Scott Mitchell, four apiece. Again, Schindler playing some very, very good stuff, mate. Um, Mickey Mansell levels it up. And Gabriel Clements has got over the line against Rusty Jake on the stream. That one went one way, then the other. Rusty has missed a handful of match starts. Clements. They put his darts down. Just seen it on the stream. He put them in the case. They were on the table. It was done. And then he steps up. Clements breathes a huge, huge sigh of relief. Um, this is quite, yeah, it's unreal, Wayne. Tension, drama all over the place. Did he do the does a shuffle on 120? I hope so. I hope so. Do you think Dazzle will find top form again? Look. If he can start competing again, he, he, he can do it. I've, I've been chatting to him a lot. He knows what he's doing wrong. It's just a case of fixing it in his head. He knows what he's doing. Um, Phil, if Ryan Meikle faced the Mike King. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm good, Flo. Um, package was sent, mate, but the problem is with Brexit, I dread to think where it's ended up. Um, it was sent ages ago, mate. Honestly, trying to ship stuff from the UK to anywhere in Europe is hard work. Um, is Price playing today? Yes, he is. He got a buy. Uh, Whitlock, 4-3 up against the Decker. Zoran Lurch backer has levelled it up against Adrian Lewis. Jackpot only averaging 87. We want to see the Dazzle shuffle back. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, to a degree, Johnny, but there's also, like, James Wade's throw is ven very manufactured as well. When, it, when it's manufactured, I think it's easier to put it right. Like, look at Adrian's. Adrian was so natural back in the day. And then he tried to play with it, and it's never looked right since. Where if if it's manufactured, I think for me it's easier to put right. Raymond Van Barneveld defeats Nathan Aspinall. Super stuff. I wasn't watching, but one sixty to win it from RVB.
All right. As you asked nicely, Vladimir, we will leave this one up and we will watch Vladimir Anderson as our feature game. Simon Whitlock is now in trouble. Mike Nadeko has turned it around. Uh, Hazel, yep, yeah, MBG won his first game. There's always a bit of a wait. Wade has a twist on his backswing. Is that something worth trying? No, not, not for me, Sam. Um, the more moving parts, the more can go wrong. Chris Dovey, now 4 2 in front against Mickey Mansell. What a day it's been so far on the stream. We've had drama all over the place, and we're only in the 1 2 8. We're not even past the first round yet, and it's been fueled with darting drama. Richie Burnett level with Stephen Bunting. Willie O'Connor level with Merv King. Callum Ritz 3 1 up on Jules Van Dyne. Whitlock has sent us to a noble as well. Battle of the Beards on stream board one. One looks nice and trimmed in Yozza. And the other one, Gob, doesn't. Callum Reed's now 4 1 up on the American. Zoran looks back at Adrian Lewis, tied at three apiece. In this final leg, both of them find a 180, but Whitlock started with three visits without a treble. Will that come back to bite him? To Decker, 82. Whitlock, no finish. Needs two trebles to put a little bit of pressure on the young man. Ninety-four leaves a finish. But he is advantage, Mike the Decker. And it goes in three. The wizard is out. Did the hard work, broke back, and then the wheels came off on throw. Callum Ridd's averaging 102, is now one away. Mantle back within one on Dobie. 
Super Mario underway against Jake Jones. Graham Hall only got called up yesterday. He plays Kevin Burness. Jamie Hughes taking the opener against Wadey. Chizzy one apiece with Luke Peters. Alan Suter one up on Max Hop. Um, Stephen, who do I think will win the WDF? I've edged for Cameron Menzies just because I think he's got the best A game in the field. Look, it'll either be A or C, but if he can hook it up, I think I'd really like Menzies. Menzies or Warby. Um, Phil, who's your pick? Uh, today, I went for Chris Doby today. Uh, fair play, bedtime for me. Blessings all. Our pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us. Always great to have you along in the chat room. Wadey levels it up. Just waiting for the voice as well. Here we hear shortly. Um, well, I'm going for men's as well. Phil, yep. Hot playing in his old shirt. I hadn't really looked. Oh, Philip, let's have a look. There he is. Interesting. Uh, Danny Nopper, a 6 1 winner over Gordon Mathers and Kim Hybrex is one away. Um, Phil, I'm on the turn of double, Aaron and Laura. Um, unfortunately, I think Makuru beats Laura. Can you bet on the Pro Tour? You can only bet on the winner pre-game or pre-tournament. And you can bet on the stream boards as well. Um, Scott has a good chance. Yeah, no, he does. Um, Callum Ridge does defeat Jules Van Dongen 6-2. Kevin Burness, Iron Man, tune it up on Graham Hall. Who's on the stream board? Right now, we have James Wade and Jamie Hughes, Max Hop and Alan Souter. Uh, Hop 2-1 up and Hughes is 2-1 up as we speak. Um, Adrian Lewis being made to wait. Zoran Lurchbacker has one back. Uh, Joe Merlin tuning it up on the feature game as well. Um, pre-game or pre-tournament. Um, so you can back the pre, no, the um stream games. You can bet on in play. Uh, Andrew Gilding defeats Ross Smith. Smudge's miserable start to twenty twenty two Pro Tours continue. By 
both Whitlock and Smith won't be adding to their tally today and the race for the match play. Uh, Chizzy only averaging 88, but three to up on Luke Peters. Stephen Bunting, 5-1 up on Richie Burnett. Merv King levels it up, three apiece for William O'Connor. Wow, so we've got Nick Fulwell, 5-2 up on Jason Lowe. Battle of the West Midlands. Uh, Sam, it happens sometimes, mate. He's not playing badly, but just not winning games. It It happens. And Adrian Lewis does get over the line against Zoran Lurchbacker. Uh, whilst we are doing that, let's hop back and have a look at the second challenge tour of the day. So there's any big casualties yet. Uh, Robert Rickwood, Davy Prusen. It's a tough first round game for both. Uh, Andy Jenkins beats Scott Taylor. Josh Payne against Fabian Schmutzler. It's a horrid tie for both. Um, Darren Johnson beaten by Nathan Gervin. Is it is one for you all? Does the challenge tour need to be seeded? I'm edging towards yes. Um, do you think Michael Smith will overcome his mental block and finally... Yeah, I, look, I still think, Joe, Michael Smith will win multiple TV tournaments. Big John Henderson warming up. As Ron Mulekamp, Kevin Dewitz, Keegan Brown, Connor Scott... Max Hop in control against Alan Souter. Excuse me. Um, Johnny says, God, yes, and definitely needs more card. Yeah, 100%. I'm, I'm with you on both those accounts, mate. Um, like I said, but we, we said before, I, I agree with what um, Matthew Edgar um, said about the Challenge Tour, that that should be the gateway to the Pro Tour. By all means, have the, the daily winners of Q School winning their card outright, but the rest should go to the Challenge Tour, completely with that one. Drop a pen. I tell you what, are we seeing a resurgence here of Geoffrey Dejuan? He's been missing for two years. That's why his tour card's in danger. And he's tuned up on Bradley Brooks, averaging 115. Had a good run in Germany as well. Are we seeing signs but the Black Cobra is making a resurgence. Let's 
Jamie Hughes, 4-1 up. James Wayne only averaging 84. You all right, Gob? Kevin Burness, 4-1 up on Graham Hall. Scott Williams, picture of the iPad. Do you think Scott Williams is pretty much safe now? Um physically right now with so much to play. No. I say that because there's three more events this weekend. Um, for, for argument's sake, let's say Matthew Edgar wins the remaining three events or Scott Marsh or Lee Evans um, or even Stu Wilson, who's there, that puts him, that puts them right back in touch. Look, it's tough, but I think at the end of the weekend, Scott could be safe, but with three events, still, no, still work to do for me, but in a fabulous position. Both stream boards, both 5-2. Max Hot, 5-2 up against Alan Souter. Jamie Hughes, 5-2 up on James Wade. Yes, Dan, we absolutely are. William O'Connor defeats Merv King, 6-4. Uh, Ryan Joyce is 2-1 up on Willie Borland. Not a classic, both mid to low 90s averages. Uh, Joe Mernon is one away from Demi defeating Vladimir Anderson on the stream. Joe Mernon's played tidy, 98 average, 93 and a bit for Anderson. Not done a lot wrong. And the 55 from Joe Mernon does go. Oh, this one, go. The battle of these two youngsters. Uh, top two, yep. Yeah. Willie Borland levels up to a piece now with Ryan Joyce.
And Max Hot does get over the line to defeat Alan Souter. Jamie Hughes throwing now to defeat James Wade and is in a good position. Just don't miscount Yozza. Uh, Jamie, yeah, absolute great tune-up for Suzuki. And I tell you what, Richie Burnett was out of this game. He was banging trouble. Stephen Bunting was 5-1 up. Uh, do you know where Leighton Bennett in, isn't in the main draw for Lakeside, but in the boys? Um, yeah, uh, pure and simple, um, Chris, that Leighton didn't qualify for the main Lakeside tournament and Luke Littler did. Um, that That's why, mate. And also, speaking of turnarounds, Jason Lowe has completely turned it around. He defeats Nick Falwell. James Wade does get another one back. <coughs> and this would be daylight robbery from Richie Burnett. But two visits of 60 has given Bunting breathing space. And Wade took out the 1 2 2 on the ball. No problems, Chris. Oh, Richie. Three visits of 60 have handed this noble leg to Stephen Bunting. To be fair, though, it's looking as if it's going to go to a noble, and you wouldn't want to do a noble leg with James Wade, would you? You just know that it will go ton, 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 take out a mid-ton finish. All right, Burnett needs a lot of trebles and a lot of luck. Otherwise, it will be Bunting who falls over the line. Ton. It does leave a finish, but probably not enough. Um, Stephen Bunting looking at double 16 to fall over the winning line. Last die in hand. Stephen Bunting gets away with it in the end. Was in complete control. And Burnett forced the decider in the end. And we are going all the way on the stream. Yozza has the darts. And our first last 64 game is also underway. John O'Shea against Andy Bolton. We've still got a couple of last 128 games also warming up. Gary Anderson, Cameron Menzies. Uh, Devin Peterson, Damian Mole. Um, actually, had a, had a look at Devin's darts close up yesterday. Nice start. They're not as not as aggressive as what the pictures look. Mario Van Bogengarder takes a 6-2 win over Jake Jones. But only a 60 from James Wade. Will that be a slip? Hughes has left 71 after 12. James Wade, 101 after 12. How's your nerve? Yozza, first stab at it. 
Doesn't go. I think he's missed the dart. So, Wadey, 101. You just know, don't you, everyone? It'll either be 61 tops or 20, 57, 24. But he's missed. Has he missed a match start? Scored 61. We will see in a minute on the stream. Did James Wade miss a match start? Jamie Hughes coming back. Jamie Hughes missed two match starts the visit before. The stream is catching up. Oh, it's Jamie Hughes. James Wade does miss a match start in that combo. So Hughes has missed five match starts and gets punished. Yoza, you cannot do that against James Wade. Five match starts go begging for Jamie Hughes. Let's see how close the final three were. First one, why is it? Second one, just the other side. We can't put them much closer. Um, Kevin Burness is one away, but it was more comfortable. We get the customary James Wade apology when he wins a leg he shouldn't. Willie Ball and four apiece with Ryan Joyce. Uh, Danny Anson, three and up on Relix against Sedansky. Um, I've been to Man Four, has a good run, big Vinny. Just looking. Let's this one. It's easy. Um, Jermaine Watamina is warming up against Matt Campbell. They are on the stream board. Always good to see Matt Campbell on the stream. Uh, yeah, it's on Quest, Discovery, and Eurosport in the UK. Uh, Mike Kivanova has defeated Martin Lukeman on board nine. Uh, Keegan Brand back within one of Connor Scott. Uh, did you get a chance to speak to Gezi yesterday? If only briefly, as in a quick chat in the corridor. Uh, Brett Clayton, 90, nearly 94 average, 6 0 over Sean Wilkinson. How are we doing? Jar is in the chat room. Hope you are well, buddy. And Louis Williams. It's a bagel. And it's not a nice one either. Defeats John Henderson 6-0. Hendo only averaging 77. Lou Williams hasn't had to play that well. And as if. By magic, we are joined by this man. Boise is in. How we doing, Mr. Bars? Yeah, good. You? Yeah. Uh, other than it by that blizzard that you hit yesterday uh, on the way back from work, all good. Oh, honestly, driving up, driving up, it was like I was going about to go to light speed in the, Millenni in the Millennium Falcon. <laughs> I was about to pull the trigger and go. <laughs> yeah, but all good. Just a little bit of a rush, but uh, looking forward to diving into the action. Haven't seen much, unfortunately. However, I did see the back end of uh, Glenn Dorrance Day and that two sixteen oh. sits to win it. Um, yeah, a couple of results before we have chat. Vanessa's gotten over the line. 
against Graham Hall made it difficult than what it should have been. Jack Bidjoan beats Bradley Brooks 6-3. Glenn, how are we doing, mate? Hope you are good. Uh, John of all good PB, Timmy, days at Gob's house. <laughs> yeah, and to be fair, c- coming back from Birmingham last night, I'll, I'll have done well if I haven't got a speeding ticket. <laughs> Never known anyone in such a rush to leave Birmingham, Phil. Try to get out. Yeah. But Birmingham to Andover, <laughs> an hour and 35 minutes. Uh, yeah, it was... It was a good night, though. Point, points make prizes, right? 100%. <laughs> 100 tell you, this is a cracking what? little game. We're going to put this on the stream. On the what board do you want me to know for, mate? Um, you can do one to eight if you want. I'll do one to eight. I'll do nine to sixteen. Yeah, if I got mate. As I go on to that, Ryan Joyce just beats Willie Borland on board eight six five. So Ryan Joyce that's over the line. That's beat Willie. <laughs> just seeing. Um... You know, Jonathan, you know. Rule number one is still the best one. Rule number one applies for everything. Hey, Boise. (laughs) (laughs) Correct. (laughs) Correct. Um, Matt says, at work till six. Didn't realise there was a pro tour today. Yes, mate, we got a triple header this weekend. Um, So, yeah, Pete says, Bill, my wife's watching today to see what the fuss is about. Once, once she's been in and got hooked, she'll want to watch the Pro Tour every time, mate. Best place to be here yeah. at Online Darts for the Pro Tour action. That's why I've turned up for a couple of hours for the uh, new fans. And so, Bill, who did Matt Campbell switch darts to? He still has his Galaxy. Um, I don't know, to be fair. I've just seen Phil as I was switching to it that board eight day in that six five Ryan Joyce. Ryan Joyce won it down 140, 140, 180, 41, 12 starters to beat Willie Ball, and there's not a lot of stops in there. there. Very good clean up by uh, Ryan Joyce to win six five. No, and Devin Peterson's having a bit of a stinker, only averaging 77, 3 0 down to Damian Mole. He was only saying in the media room yesterday. That his throw felt really good again. Yeah. Hopefully in time we'll get there. Um, Kevin Dutes absolutely battering Ron Moulin camp on board four Boise. Yeah, in total control, just one led the way now, five one, and up the throw in the seventh leg. Only started with an eighty three, but got him very, very comfortable against from Merlin Camp. Also, Danny Jansen's just one other way as he's 5-2 up on the board next to him. Uh, Desi Price and then Sterling Lentress on board one is now two apiece. Sterling Price, the start of that was averaging around the 100 mark. Now he's 13 points behind Lentress as it's now two apiece. Lentress only starts with a 39. Price return with a 140. So, to be seen a break of throwing that one. Uh, Glenn says, Noppet game and King game are next on the stream boards. Last 64. Um, Hetter and Searle games, the two before that. Cheers, buddy. Oh, good. So, well, Gary Anderson averages a decent ton. In his first round game, averaging 104 now. Where was this last night, Boise? Well, similar to his run of winning it, um, or down to the final, sorry, the, the Pro Tour a couple of weeks back. Um, but yeah, certainly wasn't to be seen last night. I found last night just generally a very, very strange night, very uh, inconsistent from a lot of which. Oh, but I, I, I said it well got, when I got home. 
we saw some good darts, we saw some average darts, we saw some shit darts. Yeah, um, and unfortunately, there was more of the latter than there was any of the other two. Yeah. Um, um, and Danny, the, the Danny Hansen, by the way, is just, sorry, Phil, Danny Hansen's just won 6 2 and it's a 1 5 1 checkout to come through that one 6 2. Sorry, mate, back to Birmingham. I, I'll say, don't, it's, the arena's lovely. It's in a nice little area by the canal. I've been there for boxing and it's really good. It just doesn't work for darts. No, I have to agree with you. But we've said about it before, having darts come through six one of them to run, run Merlin Camp. Yeah, we've said it before. It's one of those arenas. Unfortunately, when you're looking at Utah, you are you assume they are always in a pit Birmingham. And the amount of people was there was still a very, very good crowd. But yeah, the back end of that, it just it does just doesn't create a good atmosphere in there. So it's a bit difficult um to create the right atmosphere in there. So it was a bit disappointing, um, to be honest. From a yeah. um on the stage and in the crowd. But the I agree yeah. with the arena just doesn't help. Um John O'Shea up against it against Andy Bolton. Um, not the same numbers he hit in the opening round. 5-1 down is the Joker. Um, Devin Peterson making a comeback. Now back within one. Um, Peter Hudson to Richie Ed has Gary Anderson back in front. MVG one apiece with Ted Everts. Uh, afternoon, Paddy. Hope you are good. Bigger venues don't work for darts, I don't think. Uh, some of them, Teresa, some of them do. Some of them don't. I, I agree with you. Like the, the bigger, huge arenas, Leeds works very well. Um, Dublin works very well. Um, Manchester and Liverpool uh, are okay. But not it comes with both as well. You have, to, you have to have the mix of the atmosphere and the performances on the stage. And just yesterday we didn't yeah. have those, um, but I agree. It never, I was all I was surprised when I first saw that Birmingham. When we thought it was going to be in the old format, Birmingham was going to be judgment night because if there's danger line on it, it's not really the venue you'd expect that to be in. But uh, I'm not sure where Knight else they would move it to in Birmingham. Yes, judgment night was, sounds good, and it was a good idea. However, I don't think I think seven of the last eight judgment nights, no one was judged. Which is probably why it was in Birmingham, because <laughs> it wasn't only match <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'm being honest. Richie Eddowes is just uh, fighting yeah. a one forty against Pete Hudson. Finds himself now 3-2 in front. And Desi's now got three darts at double 12 for a 4-2 lead. Um, yeah, Mike, Car Cardiff's good, but it's not a big venue. It only holds 3,500, I think. Where the ones we're talking about are your 10, 11, 12,000 venues. Uh, like a prime example, the O2 is horrific for darts. Horrific. And I'm pleased that finals night isn't there because the atmosphere is dross. Yeah. But like, just back to last night, I'm not saying move it out of Birmingham. They just need to look at an alternative arena um, size of it. There's around the city from 4R4. The atmosphere around there was very, very good for the build-up. But as soon as you then get into the arena and the size of it, you just can't seem to be able to maintain that from going from the uh, streets into there. So it's just a shame that that's the case. The problem is it's, it's almost at that cr – oh, Gary – Um. Some, some of them are, are really at that point where, take Bournemouth, for instance. Bournemouth is a great venue, but not big enough. So they're out selling the little venues, but it's either little or big. There's no there's no medium-sized yeah. venues or not yeah. enough around the country. Yeah, just an update on board eight. Brian Roman, who obviously we're going to see next week at the WDF, is freeing them up against the uh the is he fully developed Josh Roth um averaging <laughs> 110 in the early stage of this one so there's not a lot that Josh Roth can do right now Brian Roman 110 in the start of this letter's on 180 137 
He's in total control. And it's an outstanding performance from the number one seed next week. Yeah. Um, MVG averaging a ton, three, one up. Uh, Jonathan says, do the PDC need each of Leeds, Birmingham, Liverpool, Sheffield, Manchester and Nottingham? No, I agree with you. I don't think they do. Um, out of that little list there, I would definitely keep Leeds, Liverpool and Manchester. The others are up for debate. But it's where you then move them to. That They have to be in big cities or big towns that have got the infrastructure and everything. So, although I agree with you, I don't, I struggle to see where they get moved to. Yeah. It, like I say, we are only talking about Birmingham because it was last night, but from a West Midlands, you'd expect them to still have one. But the only options are the NIA and the NEC, using the old terms of what they're called, um, and they are too big arena size. But then if you look at still keeping it there, the other options are like Wolverhampton, if that ever reopens, and that's too small, which fits in perfectly to, to what you're saying, is that there doesn't seem to be that right venue around this area. And the same with a couple well, of others that I'm not sure where you'd move think it the to. Civic's going to be ready for this year. Yeah, but even even as a Premier League venue, it's not big enough. So if you'd looked at no. that in comparison to the NIH from one extreme to the other, um, that's me done off what the old Civic was like. But yeah, it's definitely not going to be ready for this year. Um, looking at local reports. No, again. I was looking at things like the bonus arena in Hull, but that only holds three and a half thousand. It's certainly something to consider. One one thing that did come up last night, being in the arena, the Premier League format worked being in the arena. I know it was on the poll at the start um, around do people like the new format or not. I'm still not fully sold on it, but for... A one-off night, it did work. Of being there as a fan. Yeah. Um, Phil says uh, Premier League night in Vienna or Budapest. Look, I think definitely Budapest. The arena that they did the Euro Tour in last year has definitely been earmarked for something bigger than a Euro Tour because it was amazing. It was huge. Derwin Price just moves one away against Kurt Nenches five. Three now, very good game on board too between Brendan Dolan and Ricky Evans, both averaging mid to late nineties. Ricky Evans has just got the advantage because he's got the throw, but uh, Trebleus visits in his first three to the board as it ended that advantage to Brendan Dolan, who has found at least one trouble in every visit, and is now pinched the darts off Ricky Evans. That's three apiece, which he had out and Peter Hudson. He's also three apiece. Matt Tambor is one away then Jermaine Watamina. Josh Roth has got one bat and then Brian Roman. Senior here is can take that one four four with Roman bat on one two seven. And the dame that you've got on the on the uh board, Phil, Peter Wright finds himself one nil behind and then John Worsley in a bit of a slow start by both players, but it's Worsley who opens that one up before finding a one fourteen one hundred and then the throw. Peter right down back to back 140s. Yeah, um, some great points in the chat room. We'll come to them in a second. Um, uh, Damon Peterson is on the cusp of defeat. Damian Mole, 5 3 up on him. Uh, MVG, 4 2 up. Jose de Souza, 4 1 up on Vincent van der Voort. Luke Humphreys, 5 0 up on Christoph Kachuk, averaging 101. Some good stuff there. Ted Everts has one back against MVG. Um, also, uh, where are we in the chat room? Um, more likely to get moved out the UK arena-wise. Most suitable arenas in the UK. Yeah, agreed. Um, James, completely. Uh, is the Grand Slam still going to be in Wolverhampton? I don't think so. Um, oh, Derwin Price. Sorry, Phil. Derwin Price, what a way to win it. A 149 checkout to that over the line and then to Dirt Not a very good performance from the Iceman, but seals it with a 
Fantastic 1-4-9 Jetta to win Sid's free. Um, in regards to it being Wolverhampton, I would be surprised just because the Civic's not done to be ready and Aldersley just, for me, just doesn't work. Doesn't work. Um, yeah, so inside, so, it's fine. It's where Aldersley Leisure Village is, is the problem. Yeah. yeah. I think as, as the fact inside that, yeah. the venue, it's fine. Yeah. The fact that they have to put buzz service on, shuttle service on for fans from Wolverhampton just probably shows that it's not an ideal venue for Dart and it does put a few people off um going for that reason so yeah still it's a good venue but again they've taken it's the boring. time with doing that venue matt tamble that's over the line six four then Jermaine what i mean and we've got 100 check out um i think it's too small be interesting to see once it's all done what it looks like if there's any changes if it's suited the one thing i liked about the civic was the balcony sort of on top created a yeah, good yeah. atmosphere for me but the size of the venue just isn't big enough for it so it's been sort of that something very similar i think it could work um but yeah this year i'd be surprised if it's in more from ted Everts has broken mvg and we are level at four apiece Everts has the darts um big johnny says leicester is a great venue look i think that's the front runner for me is the morning side arena um i do think it is i wasn't convinced if i'm being honest unfortunately the week regarding um the grand prix got taken over by all the um bad sort of fan behavior towards derwin price probably being a bit too much that overshadowed what the atmosphere could have been um yeah so i'd like to see even another doll but i wasn't convinced the first time around that doesn't mean um, next time it can't work a bit better, but it's a bit overshadowed, like says, because of the what we saw with Desi. Yeah, uh, Daniel Ryan Sir is four apiece. I'm oh, sorry, three apiece with a Roby John MVG of Manton and Assault here on Ted Everts 140, 180, 135 to leave 46 after nine. Again, everyone absolutely rocking it today in the chat room. Everts is playing well here, really well. MVG breaks back. I can't take my eyes off. Go on, mate. No, no, it's MVG breaks the throw 5 4, now throwing for the match. Just in a second, I can't take my eyes off this game on board eight between Brian Roman and Josh Roth. A lot of talk we've had over the past few weeks about Josh Roth. And Brian Roman was 115, I think, dropped two just over a ton. Josh Roth is keeping himself in this game. He's 5 3 behind. He's got 25 here if he can take this out. Will only be a hold of throw, but a break in the next one. He could be doing all the way. Oh, as I say, that I've ginsed him and Josh Roth misses two inside. Brian Roman's at 72. For the win and he was so far in front average wise but he's now six points behind josh rock in the average and brian roman tated out for a six three win against josh rock very very good win from brian roman super stuff um mvg is on a finish averaging 115 in this leg Everts can't leave a finish. So, Michael, one, five, seven. Doesn't need to go. Has six at it. But 64, tidy enough, finds a treble. Everts needs a two treble visit. Only a ton does not apply enough pressure for me. This has to be 140 or bigger. 96, not enough for me. Leaves the Della if MVG can't polish off 64. 64 goes in three, 106 average for Michael Van Gerwen, 102 for Ted Everts. I know he's lost, but that's the best I've seen Ted Everts play for a while. Yeah, it's good seeing Bath playing some decent stuff. Yeah, not the result, but still, to push MVG, who's also, playing some decent stuff. It's the using last night. 
somehow Devin Peterson has produced a 12 dart leg to win the match. He's come from absolute nowhere to beat Damian Mull. Um, but in the final leg, he's gone 140, 140, uh, one, or three 140s, 81 in three. Didn't see that coming. Yeah, you did say his, his throw was there. He just saved it for one leg by the lots of things because he yeah. certainly and wasn't there for the rest said, of the he performance. Said he, he said his throw <laughs> felt really, really good the last, for the last week. And averaging 77, I was like, are you sure? A <laughs> <laughs> uh, couple of dames that are very, very close to the end. Peter Hudson, Richie Eddowes is now five apiece. And Ricky Evans is 5-4 in front of them's Brendan Dolan. Brendan Dolan's now got the throw and on 100, 140. Ricky Evans has started with a 140, but Brendan Dolan got an advantage here. Nine points in front and got the throw. So we could be going all the way in that one. However, in the noble between Edos and Peter Hudson, Hudson finds 140, 180 on throw and is looking very, very comfortable to win this one. Six, five. Also, Peter Wright is 3-1 in front of then John Worsley, who just hasn't turned up, only averaging 75. And Darren Pennell against Adam Dorlas is now three apiece. That is on board seven. Yeah, I was going to say, it's, it's not as if Peter Wright's playing well here. He's just not having to. Um... What else have we got? Oh, 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 oh. my fault, my fault. We were, we were waffling away. You missed it as well, didn't you? Peter Hudson. Peter Hudson, 13 data to win 6 5. However, board 14, boy, see. John, <laughs> if you're still it. in the chat room, this one's for you, buddy. <laughs> I, still, I'm sure, I must have the sign somewhere the Barney sign of Jarlath Peter <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure it's somewhere so Peter uh, Hudson as I was saying just before that did that 13 data and Brendan Dolan Ricky Evans are now 5 apiece with Ricky Evans starting with a 177 back to you Mr Bars yeah uh, Hazel we will try desperately um, it just depends when he starts and when it falls in relation to the match that's going on. But we will certainly try for you. Um, it's not playing <laughs> great. John Worsley, but a 1-9 one, one check out there to hold throw against Peter Wright. That's now a 3-2. Um, get the tables, does it? Yeah, get in. Um, Craig, uh, it's there. We just haven't a chance to go through them yet, buddy, because it's just relentless at the moment, but we'll do as soon as I can. Um, Devon could lose his thumb, two fingers, and he will still threat, say his throw is coming along relentlessly positive. Absolutely. <laughs> 100%. Ricky Evans, after 12 darts, has left 12. Brendan Dolan back on two LC. It's only had nine so far. But it's looking light. Rapid Ricky could defeat Brendan Dolan. Sits five. Uh, Craig, don't be sorry, mate. No, we, we'll take. We will. Um, we'll get to it, mate. Don't worry. Don't be sorry. It's our fault. Not enough hours in the day, is there, Boise? Certainly not. Not at the moment, and it's only going to get worse. <laughs> yeah. Monday, Boise's flying solo at Lakeside. I'm going to go in tomorrow, cause all the carnage, and then you can mop it all up. The worrying thing, you've got two days of carnage before I'm there, so it's going to be <laughs> double as bad, isn't it? Oh, Ricky Evans. Ricky Evans has just gone inside and has left three. So Brendan Dolan, who's fighting a 1-2-1, one, one, has left 85 and takes it out in three darts. Rapid, Ricky, oh. not a dent, but he's thrown it away, and Brendan Dolan comes through 6-5. That will hurt. Um, has Whitlock played already yet? Yeah, he lost 
Uh, 6-5, hit a 9 data and lost, unfortunately, but good signs for the Wizard. Um, what board is Lewis going to be on? Uh, he'll be on the same board, but he will be playing Connor Scott on board 15, which will be after Rob Cross and George Killington has finished. I've just switched over to the dame on board six because I was looking at the final stages of those two dames and seeing Brendan Dolan tomorrow. But Steve Beaton, then Tristoff Ratoisti. Steve Beaton averaging 107. Ratoisti 102. And it's Beaton who's 3 0 up. Steve Beaton who needs a couple of good runs. That might be saying that um, it probably needs a bit more than that this year. But. Can't ask for much more currently than a 107 average. Peter Wright's 4-2 in front. Damon Etter and Darius Labanese are just underway. Darren Pennell is 5-3 up against Alan Dolas. And PB, your pick for today, Chris Dolby finds himself 2-0 in front against Brian Joyce, averaging just 104 um, after two legs. Chart, hand on heart, I can say, honestly say, who is Molly May? And I've never watched an episode of Love Island. <laughs> Snap. Snap. Geordie Shaw, on the other hand, what a programme. But Love Island, forget it. <laughs> I think I'd rather listen to Oasis puns all day than watch either of those shows, if I'm being honest. I can and do that. I didn't say I wanted to. No, no. I didn't say I wanted to. I said, if there's a choice. <laughs> oh, I'm just, just going to get underway and like half the world away. <laughs> Wait a minute, what's that outside? No, no, Champagne no, no, soup no, over no, in the no. sky. No, 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 no. <laughs> we need Liam Gallagher back on these streams when he... <laughs> um, Sam says Tommy Fury you like boxing Phil yeah I, I love Geordie Shuttle but never watch Love Island shaking my head in disgust I'll, um, after, after we finish, I'll have a look. <laughs> Max Hopp winning the German derby at the moment, 6 4. Uh, Raymond Van Barneveld battering. Joe Merlin played really well in his first round game. And now he's having an absolute stinker. Yeah, and celebrations about Dolby might have thrown a little early. Very good start, but a who are led in lead three and he's ex Broughton. So Ryan Joyce has now got the data level things up and starts with a one three four. As I was seeing in the praise of Steve Beaton, average is still very, very good, but Retoisty is fired back with a hold and then a break. So finds himself just three two behind. And Adam Dorlas is in trouble. He's five four behind. Five four behind, yeah. yeah. And Peter Rice, yeah. he's four three in front. Johnny. Looking like this is the one away. Yeah. Uh, chin lost. To 6 2 to Andy Bolton. Andy Bolton did average nearly 103 in the game. I remember all the, Gall the Gallagher at Q School puns, they were hilarious. Superb. Uh, James nope. Lewis is in the last 64. <laughs> Interesting one on board three, just about to start as well. As Glenn Durant got his first win on this year's Pro Tour, thumbs up against Dimitri Vandenberg, who averaged around the same as does, I believe, in that first round. Uh, both around yeah. the same, so if they're around the end of then, it would be a very close day in there. Uh, hopefully, does will be looking to push on after that first win. As Peter Wright moves one away, 
and Adam Dorlas has got 80 to level this up at five apiece. Again, Peter Wright only averaging, I say only, nearly 94. Expect more from him though, don't we? Yeah, expect more, but I guess in this one he's not really been pushed. Um, just conserving the energy throughout the day. Um, Christoph Ratoist, he's won, got three on the spin and he's now all level with Steve Beaton and opens up with a 180. In that one, Adam Gorlas can't take out 80. Darren Pennell can't take out 25. Missed the dot of the ball. He's now missed two on the outside, so Adam Dorlas could be taking this all the way. And Chris Stolby does get the break back, so he's now 3 1 in front against Ryan Joyce. Uh, Rob Cross defeats George Killington. Story of George Killington's season back on the Pro Tour plays well, but can't back it up. Average around the ton, I think the 102 mark in his first round game, but voltage over the line 6 4. Raymond Van Barneveld. 5 1 to the good, averaging 95. And as James says, Barney's got a superb chance draw wise today. He is in a nice little section of the draw. Kieran, hope you are good. Um, where's the wizard today? Uh, lost, uh, hit a nine data, but lost a last leg decider. Damon Hetterfield's a 1 2 5 level 2 apiece. Yeah, he says he's on, on the stream board now. Oh, does he? Oh, Damon, you've hit it, but you've disappointed me in your way. He's gone the safe route. Not not the route we all wanted. One, two, five. He's gone full <laughs> 51 24. When the first one sits in the ball, you've got to, Damon, you disappoint me. Have a word with yourself. Mike De Decker, three one up on Mike Kyvenhoven at the moment. The Decker averaging nearly 103. Sorry, Peter Wright wins. Glenn Durant takes the opener against yeah. Dimitri. It's a howler of a leg, but I don't care. Go on, does her. Yeah, 21 darts for does it to let the opener, but it is a 1 0 lead. Peter Wright wraps up the win, as you can see on the screen. Comes through that one, a sits free. And your man, Chris Dobie, for today, is now 4 1 in front against Ryan Joy. So that break in the third leg hasn't affected him. And he pushes on and finds himself 4 1 in front. New feature day, Mr. Bars. Where are we going? Bill going for this one. I'm going to go to the ferret against Barry Van Peer. Christoph the Toasty. This is what a performance from Christoph Ratoisty. Steve Beaton was averaging 108 and was 3 0 in front. Ratoisty's wheeled off five straight leads and is now averaging 108 himself. Finds himself 5 3 up and then Steve Beaton. Just when you think Bronze Adonis could have a little run, just not down his way. And that's it's not a fat lot to do at the moment because Ratoisty fires in that 108. He did that in the first round. Jose Justicia was 4-0 up on him, and he ran off six in a row. Yeah, it's looking likely, with him having the darts here, starting with a ton and a one three seven. It's looking likely that that could be the case here, if sits on the row and then Steve Beaton. It's another strappy lead between does that and Dimmy until Dimmy then finds a 180 to leave 104, but that's after 12. Does us back on 295. Can just see once then just a bit of trouble with that consistency. Turn 47, 59, then 140. Bit of a struggle, but on the board next to him on board four, Damon Hetter finds himself three two behind, but currently averaging way over 100. Looking likely here. To level things up at three apiece. 
Yeah. Oh, it doesn't take it out. On board two, Phil. Martin Schindler's currently averaging 121, but finds himself 2 0 behind. And then it's Mario van der Bodard, who's averaging 116 himself. Christoph Latoisty wins. It's 8 out 108 and a 6 3 win. Matters Razma. Two all with Jason Lowe. Not not the um not gonna be the quickest game this one, boys, is it? Not the quickest game, and to be honest. The scoring is it is in helping. In this one, Rasmus now coming back for well, he's had twenty one darts now. He's not been able to win the lead. So it's a bit of a slow down with the pace that both players play at and the scoring just isn't helping. J Lo will hopefully let a break here with him on double ten. This will be for, see if we can take this out. No, we can't. So, Manders Rasmus coming back, which could be a 24 data to win this one. 3 2. Saying about that Martin Schindler, Dame, he finds himself 3 0 behind the NFL, averaging 110, and you're losing 3 0. Relentless. Um, where was the question there? The average is showing is a running average for the day, or is it just the match? No, so on the Dark Connect um, screen, on the live games, the average at the end of each player's name is the, what they're averaging for that game. On the feature game, the two averages that you see, the red one is the average for the leg. The black one is the um, match average. Uh I was there, my dad, my rich dad just bought me front row tickets for need next week. Nice. Just uh, seen a result pop up on your board, Phil. The all German affair with Matt Top and Clemens. Did not see that coming. No, look, I don't think Clemens has played well all year, to be fair. But Max Top is very hit and miss. When he's good, he's good. But We've also seen some some howlers. It's only 89, the average. Um, Kevin Burness is making a run today. He's into the last 32. He beats the serial killer, Martin Clearmacker. Adrian Lewis, Connor Scott is underway. And we're on Dobes. Yeah, Dobes moves one away. It's not been a great performance, however... He doesn't mind, and I'm sure you don't mind, Mr. Bars, but he finds himself just one away as he's 5-2 up against Ryan Joyce, who just isn't punishing. We're underway as well on board five with Janssen and O'Connor. Janssen starting off with a 180. We're also underway between Callan Ritz and Brett Clayden. Just back to one day in between. We spoke about Dozer. Storing just isn't there. There's a bit of inconsistency. He started this lead better. However, he's just cleaned up 89 and still 2 1 in front against Dimmy. And the dents to throw down 140 100. He has stolen the darts. So does it be looking to go into a 3 1 lead against Dimmy? Uh, cheers, Johnny. Not a problem. Um, AD won his first round and will return to action very, very soon. But done, done all right. Martin Schindler. Yeah. <laughs> He's over the line, Phil. Dolby is over the line. Sits two winning and Ryan Joyce. 91 average. But the Dolby is through. Uh, and as you've just mentioned his name, Martin Schindler, what more can he do? He's averaging two points more than his opponents. He's averaging 107. Finds himself 4 0 behind. Mike, Talking about a player who's playing. Very well. Damon Hetter. If 
finds himself 4-3 four, four, behind sorry, then Darius Labanostis, but not doing a fat lot wrong. It is on throw, and Heta started this one, 180, 134, with Darius unable to find a treble in two visits to the board. So it's looking likely to level it up, but Heta does need a break of throw. He's playing some good stuff. Does a move yeah, three one in front? Go on, does uh, Andrew Gilding four three up on Louis Williams. Tidy game ninety seven ton average for the pair of them. Johnny Clayton has gone through the gears. This one looked close in the early stages, but he has gone to another level. Adrian Lewis is one behind against Connor Scott. Worrying times for Dimitri. Really struggling here to find consistency on his story. And we spoke about Glenn. Glenn's struggle seemed to be looking at the story and about him staying straight, even in this one. Three decent visits to the board, leaving one five six after nine, but that's a one three five. So straight into the treble five. One two five. One to then straight to into the five. And then an eighty-five. But is in control of lead five and Glenn Durant could be doing 4-1 in front. And Martin Schindler, now averaging 102, does finally get his first lead on the board. He's still 4-1 behind and then Super Mario. Johnny Clayton, 6-2 win over Barry Van Pier. Clayton ran riot in the end. Right, we've got a lot of a lot of jackpot fans in today, so we know where we're going with this one. Hmm. Well, now we always have a lot of Damon Hetter fans, and there's a potential great opportunity here. Oh, I can't find a treble, only a six day. Labanosti is on 247. Damon Hetter on 210. Labanosti says dot the darts. Glenn Durant now 4 1 in front of them to Dimmy. Is the back to back wins for Duza incoming? He's averaging 90 as well. Yeah, it's seeing the stores, Phil. It's not that the treblers have been a problem, it's a then. Here he's done 85. The amount of darts that are down into that five is the worry currently. That's better. Fires in a 100. It's just in front of Dimmy in this one. Now, Hetch has gone back to back sixes. Against Andrew Gilding, that's four apiece. Oh, Mario. Mario, Mario, Mario. Had three back-to-back 100s. Was hoping for a fourth and then a clean-up of the 101 for the perfect 15. <laughs> but he uses the ball. Rightly uses the ball in that last start to that 25. Um, to leave 96. Damon Hetter was just on 60-60-67. When he did have advantage in that one. And Darius Labanowski cleans up. Finds himself now 5-4 in front and then it's Damon Hetta. Manders Rasma is also one away and then it's Jalo. 5-3 in front and he has the darts. Um, yeah, Rob Cross is still in. Voltage going about his business so far today. Uh, last game he beat George Killington 6-4 on board 15. Got the alarm ready, Mr. Bars. The alarm is always ready. Always, <laughs> always ready. But board 14. You know what's coming, everyone. It's that time again.
Uh, Barney will play Andy Bolton. Interesting. So in the uh, in the house in Nottingham, Phil, where we've got Jar and Dob currently, Jar will obviously be happy that Barney is about to start, and James Wade, who Dob is his number one fan, has just fired in a one sixty. in those two nil in front of them to Matt Campbell. So a happy household. Just gonna have a look at something. In coming match dart, maybe darts for Darius Labanostis against Damon Hetter. He's done three one forties to leave eighty one. Hetter can only leave seventy two after twelve. Can Darius take out eighty one for an impressive win over the informed Damon Hetter? Just want to stay with me a sec, Phil. See if you can take out the 81. Can't. Leaves 32. Damon Hetter needs 72 to save the game. While we're waiting for that, one player we haven't I haven't mentioned, but he's 5 0 in front. Callum Rids against Brett Clayden, averaging 99 and 5 0 in front. And the Heat does take us to a decider. Damon Hetter, 5 5 with Darius Labanostis. Labanostis has the throw. But the momentum could be with Heta. Also, as well, said Raymond Van Barneveld is etching closer to the green on the match playlist. Edging still closer. doesn't mean he's confirmed. Still doesn't mean he, if he's in there and then confirmed with Dobbs rules. Who knows what'll happen? But how good would that be? <laughs> How good would that be? To, to be fair, Gob's still trying to work out if um, Ryan Sell's safe. <laughs> just a update on the Dimmy and Dozadane. Dimmy's now not batting, just fighting a ton. Check out. Both averaging 91. I was a bit concerned around the standard we'd have in this day. But both averaging um, both averaging around 91. Dimmy's now got the throw after just breaking Dozadane. And one three four one three one sees him in control of this one. Mario beats Martin Schindler six one. Both players averaging ninety seven. And J Lo looks like he's going to be taking it all the way against Madras Rosma. And unfortunately, as I said, momentum was with Damon Hetta. He can only find sixty one and one hundred events to throw another one hundred. But Darius Labanos he's done one three four one forty one hundred to leave one two seven. Labanosti's got six at 127 to beat Damon Hatter. And Darius Labanosti's cleans it up in style, the 127, which, Phil, I'm sure you'll let me know on stream how he takes that out. But Darius Labanosti sits. Damon Heta five. Laban oh, 60, 51, double eight. And Heta has been Labaned. <laughs> um, Jeffrey Deswan looked dead and buried in this game, but are there signs? I said earlier, boys, when, was, when we were talking to the chat room. There are signs. This black cobra may have some venom again. Yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully. It's what we want to see. Um, so hopefully we will see that. So intrigued by this Dimmy and does it ain't. Does we're both around still that 90 mark. Can does that take out 107? No, we can't. Dimmy's coming back for double five to take this down to four apiece. Big moments as well. Adrian Lewis has just broken back against Connor Scott. We're now three apiece and we are back on throw. And Jackpot has the darts. 
Very intriguing dame just got underway on board eight. Brian Roman, who performed so well in his previous dame, is coming up against your man, Chris Dolby. Phil, that is just underway. But if Roman can find the form he found in the previous round, Dolby will need to step it up a level or two. In a noble lead on board one, Madders Rasma and J Lo, as you said, it's a dame that has, has tipped up on very slowly. But Madders Rasmus will have matched Artia to beat J Lo 6 5. He's got 50 left. As Talon Reeds wins 6 1, and then Brett Clayden. Madders Rasma wins 6 5, and then J Lo. And unfortunately, Phil, for Glenn Durant. Have the wheels fell off a little? 85 and 59 on throw. Did me not punish you now? Only 160. So becoming a bit strappy. Danny Anton is 4 3 up against William O'Connor. And James Wade is now 3 2 with Matt Campbell. Bill, just a, a question for you. We we spoke about the form of, of Duzza. Currently, concerns for Dimmu? Not playing to the, the standard we've seen previously. And in this one, he's struggling to punish an inconsistent Duzza. Thoughts on Dimmu at the moment? A, a little bit, yeah. And no, I think we saw the best of Dimitri when he was settled in the UK. But listening to some recent bits, he's moved, he's obviously back in Belgium. Until a little one is a little bit older, which like, I completely understand, but I'm not sure he's adapted again to the, the commuting all, all the time. I think the best we saw of him was when he was settled and, and living in the UK. Yeah, we just like we, we talked about certain players who have dropped quite considerably, and I'm not saying Dimmy has. However, the levels that Dimmy was at, obviously the. The, run, the runs he's had at the match play, not just the one, but winning it and then following it up with a runner-up spot. Um, just don't seem to be the same level that we've seen before. Dobes takes an early lead in that one, but here then he's fighting back to about 60s, 180, then a 41, but he's not punished by Glenn. Dimmy's now got 60, two break throw and move one away and then does that. Matt Tamble with a 110 check out to level things up against James Wade. It's a tidy game on board five for you as well between O'Connor and Janssen. Liking this one. Yeah, it's, <laughs> some of these games at the minute for different reasons. The performances of both is very good. Obviously, Dolby and Romani is one I want to keep my eyes on very closely. But this, this Dimmy and Duzza for drama, Dimmy's now not been able to take out 16. He's tame inside. To leave 10. Glenn Doran's at 48 for a 5 4 lead. Let's see if Glenn can just take that out. No, we can't. Fortunately, this Dimmy's at 18 darts now and finds himself on 10 4 to win. And to be honest, the feature name you've done on looks very interesting as well, Mr. Bars. Between yeah, AD no, and Connor Stilton. Three breaks of three breaks of throw in a row. This one is literally swinging like a pendulum. But also, Danny Noppert has defeated Jeffrey Desjardins on the stream board. Really good game, mate. Enjoyed that one. Head in my hands because Dimmy's missed more. That's at least four, if not five, he's missed in this lead. Does has missed two himself, but he's coming back for double eight. And does a tate it a 24 dart lead, but he will not mind as does a moves one away than Stimmy. That is now a 5 4. As your man Dobes moves 2 0 in front of then Brian Roman. Mate, that 3 0. Just on a sneaky feeling, Phil, that in this game we will be going all the way. 
Five four Thornley to Glen, but just starts with a sit steed ends the throw. Dimi back to back one hundred. How they are currently playing, if Dimi can find one treble per visit, you would then fancy him to that one on and take the leg. James Wade four three as Danny Anson moves one away and then to William O'Connor. That is now five four. You know, as you said, a very very intriguing day. Yeah. This one here, Lewis. This would be a huge, huge step. Just needs to hold throw and does after three consecutive breaks. That's huge. Um, as Kim Hybrex and Kevin Dewitt are pulling up. Holland against Belgium. I know it's only the first leg on board 11, but that's the Gary Anderson that we saw the other night. Seen two blistering averages, and now that. Yeah, that's normally his Sunday average, isn't it? Not his Friday afternoon. Stop. Stop. Normally slightly, <laughs> <laughs> the normally slightly different. Oh, I just says about. I thought I can't stop watching it. There's so many games happening, but I can't dim my eyes off it. There's a dimmy in playing, but I just said about dimmy. Just need to carry on finding one treble. He's found a sixteen, a fifty-seven. But he's just not punished by Glenn. He finds a 47 and a 40 either side of a 132. Dimmy then finds a 136. So he's left 48. We does a back on 222. And your man Dobbs is looking in total control as he does 4 0 in front. William O'Connor and Danny Anson are going all the way. It's now 5 all. It is Devin Peterson. It's three apiece with Stephen Bunting. Um, as well. Also, Jamie says, hey, that's Pro Tour today, straight after a Premier League night. Is that a first? Uh, no, I think it's happened before, mate. James says, come on, Dazza, we're all there. We're all in the Dazza fan club. He's got one two eight to win it after Dimmy misses more. And this is it again. Back to his, he's set that up, that one two eight up with a 94. He's only found 33. So he's left himself on 95. Pressure on Dimmy. If he would have had a big check out, uh, a big store in visit, however, Dimmy can't take it out, Phil. So we could have Glenn Durans with back to back wins. He's got 95. Just got to make sure he gets a dart at a double. Has to make sure he does. Just aim me to see if Glenn can wrap this up as Wade made, uh, Campbell made it for a piece with Wade. And Glenn Doran takes out 95. 21 oh, dart head. But Glenn Doran beats Dimitri Vandenberg 6 4. And that's back to back wins for Duzza. Just stay with me, Phil, because William O'Connor and Danny Anson, 12 darts each. William O'Connor's left 50, but that's a dense to throw. Danny Anson's coming back for 105. Can't take it out. So William O'Connor, 50 for a 6 5 win. And a hundred plus average. Just gonna see if we can take this out before we return to your boards. As Dolby is now five nil in front. It's all going well for you today, Phil. All going well. Dolby five up. Does a sit for winner. Can William Altana take this out for a six five win? Normally, when there's a long dap, it means yes, but not on this occasion. William Altan has missed two outside the 16s. Janssen's coming back for a 6-5 win himself. Adrian Lewis over the line. Beats Connor Scott. Superb. Barney, 4-2 in front. Mike the Decker is playing out of his skin here. 3-2 up on MVG. 81 to break for an 11 dart leg. Mike the Decker is playing beautifully here. And it goes. That is a break of throw. Mike the Decker averaging 103 is 4 2 up on MVG. MVG averaging 103.78 as well, doing nothing wrong. All of a sudden, the Pro Tour has kicked into life. Someone that hasn't kicked into life is Gary Anderson. 3 0 behind against Max Hoff, averaging 87. And though, looked irresistible. In his first couple of games, but now is right up against it. 
Result on board five. It's Jansen who that's through, and then it's William Altona misses two dots outside on the double 16. And it's Jansen who punishes for a six five win, averaging five points less than William Altona, oh, who averages oh, 100. Oh, and Campbell's in. 5 4 in front. Back to you. Sock Back to you. Sock Matt Campbell. Sock Matt Campbell. MBG. Can you? Can you, Michael? Some good news for you, Phil. Chris Dolby sits. Brian Roman, nil. We have a bagel from Dobes who comes through that one. Brian Roman unable to follow up his impressive win. But it's Dolby who then through with a six nil win. Just seen on boards one and two. We haven't had a player for a while. We've got Dolan and Van der, Bo Van der Bodard warming up, as well as Derwin Price and Madders Rasma. This is, this is MVG all over at the moment. He gets he gets broke. Then breaks back with a stunning leg. And then only kicks off 57. One away. Raymond Van Barneveld. 5-2 up now against Andy Bolton. Looking to book a place in the last 16. Phil Lloyd... The man himself, George Noble, must be refing all these games because so many games with only six five, and we've got another one with James Wade and Matt Tumble. They are now five apiece. Both players started with one hundred, but then Matt Tumble just finds a forty three. So, Tud Wade, do a bit of wading against Matt Tumble. Fires a 180 in to take advantage. And then Tumble, another missed opportunity, if so. Yeah, Matt Tumble, only 43 and 58. Advantage now fully with James Wade on 2-2-1. Two, two, At least six, potentially nine from here. Might need them after only finding six today. Tan Tamble finding a one forty plus. Oh, just one hundred. Sit start for James Wade from one six one. You would expect the machine to clean this up. Though in price and Manners Rasma are underway. So are Brendan Dolan and Super Mario. I'll tell, I'll tell you what, this is one, an absolute two, belter of a game. On our feature game. Oh. Absolute superb. Mike the Decker is playing out of his skin here. And he's pushing MBG to the absolute limit. Superb game. Also in the other ones. Raymond Van Bardeveld is into the last 16. Glenn in the chat room. I'm not sure if that's a treat or not. Does or will be on the streaming board next. But some prime wading on board six for you, Boise. Yeah. <laughs> Tamble fighting back to back tons, but it was just a little bit too late. Two per visits really got punished here by James Wade. That 180 did hurt. Then he cleaned up 40 in two um, to wrap it up in a 14 dart lead. Um, and James Wade comes through. A player who's average, we probably don't need to talk about James Wade because he just always finds that W. Um, but it's James Wade who gets over the line against Matt Tamble. Mike Decker is flying. Right now. Oh, but has he just blinked? Has he just blinked? Is that the moment this game gets away from him? He scored brilliantly. And then missed. But is this an opportunity? Mm. 
Well, you are looking at that, Phil. Talking about streaming boards and does that, the other streaming board, what a game you've got. Rob Cross and Adrian Lewis are coming on streaming board too very shortly. Desi in a bit of early trouble. Phil finds himself 2-0 behind against Manners Razma. And only finds in a 46 to start on throw. Manners Razma is uh, averaging 111. And he's already pinched the darts in his third leg. Worrying time for the Iceman today. On throw, MVG has fluffed his lines. The Decker, favourite to send us to a noble. And he will have the darts. <clears throat> oh my, professional miss. What have you done there, Mike the Decker? <clears throat> Hmm. Devin Peterson, Stephen Bunting going to a noble as well. That is five apiece. Hmm. Mike the Decker, if you lose this game, you'll learn a very harsh lesson about board management if this 72 goes. It doesn't. So Mike the Decker breathes again. But regardless, he has to learn from this. Board management has been poor in this leg. They scored phenomenally, played some beautiful stuff. But when it matters, composure went. And bust his score. This is what we say, Boise. Let's just see if MVG hits this first of all. Oh, Michael. Decker may have got away with this. But when your opponent is not on a, or on a big fish, you have to be, you shouldn't be anywhere near leaving seven because you end up in a pickle like this. Yes, he's got away with it, but should never have been in that situation. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. They've got to manage it better. And sometimes you kind of hope that. They are punished just because they learn from it and it, it moves on. But I can see another result has appeared on your boards, Phil. Yeah, Stephen Bunting does get over the line. 6-5 in a last leg decider against Devon Peterson. Um, also, Gary Anderson is back to three apiece. So he's still only averaging 93. I say only as if that's poor, but for Gary Anderson, we all know that that's not the... Not the Gary Anderson we know. Yes, it's very good darts, but Max Hoff is now 4-3 in front again. Um, but the game, we are looking at a feature game. For me, it's advantage Mike the Decker still. Unless MVG, this has to be two trebles. Now, let's put the pressure on the young man. But blinked. Advantage has gone. Michael Van Gogh and has stolen the darts. Michael Van Gogh in leaves 84. The Decker 188. 140, 180. 180 applied. Pressure applied from Mike De Decker. Has he got away with it? Or does the 84 go? The 84 goes. And Boise, that bit of the end is vintage Van Gerwen. When someone applies the pressure, he pops the little two dark combinations. That's something that's been missing over the last two years. We've seen it over the last month come back in spells when he's been winning tournaments. But that's the vintage, Michael. Yeah, it, it's popping it in two as well. That's... Weirdly, he's probably more important because in three, you still have that little bit of doubt, um, even though he would have that over the line. But doing it in two, he just breeds a bit more confidence. Uh, just in one of the days, we did have six perfect darts, but then Dave Tree's not then messed around a little bit, but did that over the line. But the story could be coming on board one, Phil, as Derwin Price is 3 0 behind, and then Maddox Rasmus has just missed three darts. No 4 in front, but Derwin Price is not 1 2 5. 
Can he find one, two, five? Yes, he can. The Iceman, every time we tend to doubt him because of this injury, he still finds something special. And he is now three, one behind. Still still a long way to go. Tim Ibrett is four apiece with Kevin Dirt on board four. And Callum Ridds finds himself two, one in front. We're going to stick with the conclusion to see if Ando can get himself out of trouble. Uh, Damon Hetta lost to Darius Labanowskis. Good game, but... I'm pretty sure we've got a roar at the end of that 84 as well, Boise. Uh, just a little. Just a little. <laughs> Probably a... A little bit of a telling off from everyone else in the arena because we certainly would have heard it. Right. And though, one seven one. To leave 16. This is only a hold. Doesn't normally find himself in that region of the board. It goes. And this is the moment. Max Hop now has the darts to serve this one out. 6-4. Does not want to be handing it back. Also, Andrew Gilding 4-0 up on Luke Humphreys on board 16. Um, could be a couple of shocks brewing. I don't want to jinx it too soon, but I am really liking the look of how determined Tim Hybrex is looking on stream. He's now moved 5 4 in front, then to having directed. He's on throw, so we could be down all the way. But there's some good stuff coming in there. Callum Reeds has now lost the last two leads and found himself 3 2 behind. Then to Darren Pennell and Peter Wright is underway, and then to Danny Janssen. Durbin Price has got back to back leads and then. Madras Rosma, 10 points behind him in the average. Closes that gap to one. Super Mario, two. Brendan Dolan, one. And Dave Chisnell is now 3 0 in front of them to Peter Hudson, who's just averaging 72. This is, oh, as I say, hot. Was in a very good position there, but that 59 just leaves the door open slightly. You know, Anderson need I'm not sure a ton's enough. So, this is your moment, Gary Anderson, to send us all the way. Oh, Gary, Gary, Gary pings the 120 and we go to the Noble on the feature game, Boise. We certainly do. We have another Noble, which is the stream game with Tim Hybrex and Kevin Dowitz. Said, I've been impressed with Tim so far. Be interesting to see now the pressure's on. He has got the throw, but he feet and out of the line and he starts with a 140. Power visits by Derwin Price. On board one, Madras Rasma 68 for a 4 2 lead. See if you can take it out. He can't, so Price will be coming back for 58 to level things up. And in the noble over here, before we come back to you, Phil, Tim Hybrex has started 140 96. Derek's only eating 26 on his first visit. Back to you and your noble. To advantage Gary Anderson and this one will sting Max Hop. Gary Anderson tees up tops after 12. Max Hop 
knocked on a finish and Gary Anderson trailed 4-0, sorry, 3-0, trailed 5-3. Is he going to win it? Gary Anderson looks at tops. Oh, is there another twist? Gary Anderson misses three max start. Max top wants 71 as Gary's gone round the houses. What have you got left? No, is the answer. Gary Anderson breathes again. Max Hopp has also missed match darts. But the double five is never the nicest. Oh, Ando. Ando, Ando, Ando. Six match darts have come and gone. He is Max Hopp, the luckiest boy in Barnsley. Oh my, what is going on? What is going on? And it does go. Gary Anderson falls over the line. But from there, we are going to jump straight to this one. Because the world number two was in deep trouble. He's still in trouble, Boise. But it's not as deep as what it was a minute ago. Yeah, he's still averaging 10 points less than Manners Rasma. But he's wheeled off three straight legs before Rasma then as Broughton. And then Manners Rasma gets that sort of advantage. Fires in only 39 on throw. Durbin Price responds with a 180. So he stopped the advantage back. So we could be down all level. Just a quick uh, result update on the noble lead that I had. As I said, Tim Hybrex looked very good, was in control of that final lead and wrapped it up in 15 darts. Uh, but yeah, back to Derwin Price. The response from Rasmus is a 1 3 4. So inconsistent from both players. Derwin Price 180, now just a store of 40. Same consistent. Madders Rasmus averaging 100, but what we've seen is a lot of very, very high stores followed up with your 39s, 59s in there as well but he's now got the advantage back in this one after that poor visit from desi desi finds one three five first down to a finish but it is a big one one four six with manners rasma on one nine five brendan dolan's four two behind her than super mario and dave cheating on his four nil in front of them to peter hudson down penhall and callum reeds are four apiece And a very good dame up coming on board sits, Phil, as Christoph Ratoisty and James Wade will meet on board six. Yeah. Pressive wins for both players um, in the last day. Yeah. Um, I don't Price think the Decker did anything wrong there. Um, not, maybe not in the final leg, but the leg before that he got away with, he, his board management was awful. He got away with it in the end, but it was, well, big moments there. Rasma is on the hill. Yeah. Yeah, Derwin Price had 146, so I would assume because he hit 120, he'd miss one outside on the double 13 to, to wrap yeah. that lead up and level the store. But Rasma come back for a 21 and won the lead, and now he's 5 3 in front. We talked about the world number two being in trouble. World number one, it's not down his way as well. Danny Anson is 3 1 in front. Didn't see what it was as I was uh, voting on the price name, but it certainly was a Tom plus check out. And then it's Peter Wright. And he's 3 1 in front. And then Snake Boys, who is really struggling with his story, and only averaging 88. Visit here of 81, 76, and 60. Not really punished until now by Anson. But Peter Wright in a bit of trouble as well as Dave Chisnell moves one away. And then it's Peter Hudson. And that is 5 0. So we could be seeing a Badal on board three. To be fair, Chisnell's not. Look, it will look good on paper a 5 0 win. It's only an 89 average. 
from Chizzy. Oh, this is brilliant from Madas Razma. Absolutely stunning, Boise. Price is in trouble, and there's not a fat lot that Price can do in this lead because Razma's done ton 177, 180, 44 in two, 11 dart lead from Madas Razma, and the world number two that's knocked out, and the world number one. Who's three one behind? Needs to take out nine to nine here. Or Janssen to be four one in front. He doesn't take it out. So Janssen four double ten for a four one lead. Cleans it up. First start in hand. And Danny Janssen four one. As we're to take, take to the opener against James Wade and Callum Ridge is five four in front. We don't often put the stream game as a feature game but i think we have to on this one boy see yeah I, well i was contemplating to edge you towards if there's going to be a story on board five that i'll take you updated but that that streaming board as i said when i saw it advertised on the uh, tv i was looking above at um it's one not really to take your eyes off i'm glad you have because i can still have a sneaky look at it now while it's on the what is on the stream, mate? Um, Dave Trisnell wins six nil against Pete Hudson. Hudson averaging seventy two. It's not vintage Trisie, but he'll certainly take the six nil. And on that board, Phil Lewis punishing missed starts from Cross. Yeah. This is better, Peter Wright. This is better against the throw. Ninety one left after nine. Just big for jackpot as well. Yeah, it is good run here. Do you see Peter Wright and clean this up? Yes, can 4 2. And we are in the early stages, Phil, but in the first lead, it was a 12 data from Christoph Ratoisty, and then James Wade. In the second lead, he's left 44 after 9. 140, 180, and a 137 all in there. Yeah. Adrian Lewis and pulling clear of Mental Suda or above Mental Suda, which now in the race for the match play. Barney making a move. We have match darts and the Fatalan Ridge who cleans it up. A 6 4 win for Talon Ridge who butts himself a place in the last 16. Um, and what a game that will be. Phil, as Talon Ridge will be taking on Chris Dolby. Yeah. Um, TK, no, we're in about the same shot, mate, when MVG was on the 170, but you have to be professional, and if you're going to miss, you miss on the outside. Of course, you go for it, but you edge on the side of caution. It's, they're, they're, it's the same with 10s to 5s. Just you be professional and... It, the likelihood is you're coming back. Yes, every now and then they will take them out. We're not saying lay up and split it and go and leave a nice double, but you just have to be professional and don't go inside. Yeah, I think I think the key word in there is professional. For people who are not at this level, you just attack that double and if you come inside, you come inside. However, the professional players can are aiming specifically for a part of that double. And they yeah. can yeah, they're, they're, sort they're, of they're tend to aim for it. We're just aiming in the, yeah, in that's the region the there. Yeah, I, I'm just aiming to make sure I don't put another hole in my wall. There's different <laughs> standards of quality that we're going for. Um, well, number one has got back to just one. It broke Janssen as he was with me. He's now held throw quite comfortably. And... 100 faces 95 so danny anson here 140 good start by anson just needs this one to move one away and christoph were toasty he won did he say one sits on the bounce in the first leg being four nil behind sits on the bounce yeah. to come from three nil behind in the previous game in this one didn't wait for james wade to win any legs he's just fought he's just firing at 119 average to be three nil in front of against james wade it's all about waiting. Opportunity's not being given for him to do that. 
right now as Ratoyster. Result. Day Noppert beats Ryan Searle. 6'3", 102.72 for Noppy on the averages. Um, Tony, no, the Decker lost to MVG. It was close, but MVG found a bit of brilliance when it mattered. But this is a cracking game on the stream. This, this time, though, must be absolutely horrible for Dob because you've got James Wade, who is his boy, um, against the man. Did you call him a different animal, twist off the toy, Steve? Memory serves me right. Um, yeah. He's firing in a different animal performance. Does averaging 119, and if you can check this out in two, that average is only going up after he leaves 41 after nine. It's not a fat lot that James Wade can do right now. Janssen's got 48 to move. One away, then's Peter Wright. Take it out. World number one's in trouble. World number one is in serious trouble. We've just lost world number two, Derwin Price. Is Peter Wright going to follow suit? Retice D. Wanted you to clean that up just for that average, but still. Left double four. And cleans it up in one. So, 118 average now for Christoph Ratoisty and a 4 0 lead. That's James Wade. At this point, um, Phil, not, playing, on, playing well number one, playing well number one, you're 5 3 in front. What is going through your head? <laughs> I don't This would don't be a know, huge one. I don't know Danny Yance. I obviously, I've, I've never met the guy, so I don't know. There's some players you you get to know them over time, and you know how they think. Some players won't care. Some you, we know will overthink it. Um, we'll find out now because he's at the point of no return. So uh, the site on the right is Darts Connect. Um, TV.DartConnect.com. Cross breaks. Throw in for four apiece. This is the lead because Peter Rodge just held. So now Danny Janssen hold throw to beat world number one. Started with a 140. Shady starting the last lead, but a better start in this one. And Christoph Ratoisty continues his run of leaving a finish after nine. It's 164. But he does leave the finish after nine. This is relentless on the Polish Eagle. Peter Wright responds in his down with a 180. And he answered 140 to start with, but only a 60. Can Peter Wright back up that 180? Nope, just 45. 180 from Janssen leaves 121 after nine. Peter Wright back on 276. And over on board six, we could have performance of the day so far, Phil. As Christoph Ratoisty is now averaging 114 to be 5 0 up on James Wade. Not bad from the Polish Eagle. But back to board five, Danny Janssen has left double eight. After 12, Peter Wright 157. To save the game and have the throw in the decider. Can Snake by Tate out 157 for a 12 data and take us all the way? And of course he can. World champion steps up. We talked about moments of quality. We spoke about MVG doing it at the back end of his day. Peter Wright was 5 3 behind, just fires in a 157 for help for a 12 data to level things up at five apiece. Ouch. We have, a, we have a noble as well on board two, Brendan Dolan, and then Super Mario is five apiece. Yeah, and Dolan's come back into this. Mario was in control. Rob Cross levels it up at four apiece. And Adrian Lewis only kicks off 41 
This one's swinging one way, then the next. The averages aren't the best in this one, but it's got us gripped because of that, because they're both under their brilliant best. That's why this has got us captivated, and it's why it's four apiece. But all eyes on board number five is the world champion going to scrape through, Boise. Sometimes we say when it's your day, it's your day. And Peter Wright has came from nowhere here to level things up. That one five seven was a bit against the run of the play so far. It's now done back to back one forties. Only followed it up with a six day. But the pressure seems to have got to Jansen. Only found one one hundred. And that was either side of a visit of eighty three and forty five. Peter Wright on one six one. Just 65. Janssen back on 273. Really? Only 180 hertz. 140. Good visit, but back on 133. And this is then with Peter Wright missing 96. After we've seen him take out 157. Just tan snake bites. Clean it up. No, we can't. Tan Janssen take out a 133 to not out the world jump. I'd love to know if I in this. If or how many times? <laughs> how many times? Oh, Peter Wright. Peter Wright has missed three darts at 16. And Janssen is coming back for 60 for the game. We have lost world number two recently. We could be leaving, losing world number one. If Janssen can take out Sitsdy. For the result, I would say of the day, Janssen wraps it up. It's a 6 5 victory. And then Snake Bite and Danny Janssen needs all three darts, but he will not tear one little bit. It's 6 5, Danny Janssen, and then Snake Bite. Peter Wright, 1 and 2 have done in the last 10 minutes. Oh my, does this. This thing's Rob Cross. Ouch. Adrian Lewis, sound 75. Rob Cross, treble 19, treble 19, double 16, a 146 from voltage, and that stings. It does. And we talked about top players dropping. We could have another one. Why dot a lead back and then twist off with Toysty? The average of Toysty dropped by about 10 points, Phil. However, we're still averaging 108. That's not too bad. Mario, that Super Mario. Six five against Brendan Dolan, as you said, 40 is really nothing to it. Mario with a 16 dart lead, and he knocks out Brendan Dolan. That was against the throw. World number one, world number two, world number five are all done. James Wade, six one defeated against Christoph Wotoisty, average 105.61. However, performance was even better than that throughout. Just a poor sit play. First time we've seen Duzzer on. Right, let's have a look at these throws. The Chizzy throw looks horrid. I don't know if anyone else is in the chat room. The Chizzy, the pullback, the pause at the back of the backswing looks too long for me. Have you got it on, Boise? I've just put it on. Look at the pause at the back of the backswing. Yeah, it's it's all on that first start, isn't it? There's the second and third, obviously, we know at the, the speed of the player. But that, but fir that first one, yeah. That first start, the pause looks too long. And Adrian Lewis has broken back and now has the darts in the noble. This is better from Glenn early on. Yes, he might lose the lead, but leaving tops after 12 is a very good start from Duzza. And you would like to think those two wins have gave him some confidence. And misses from Chizzy. He had 45. Two darts missed. Has now opened up an opportunity. 13 dart lead from Glenn Durant. 1-0 lead against Dave Chisnell. But, Phil, we will come to you on... Your noble, we expected it to be good. Has it lived up to it? 
it's in the balance. Advantage cross. About 48, I think, could be the difference. Okay. Especially even one treble here hurts jackpot. That hurts. Now, this has to be two trebles minimum just to get him down to something. And oh, Adrian, Adrian, Adrian. Cross. That's brilliant from Cross. All Adrian Lewis can do is hit trebles and hope Rob Cross misses and doesn't. Rob Cross breaks the throw in the decider. Too many trebleless visits from Adrian in that noble leg. Glenn Dorant still splitting between the um the, looking at it on the stream and what's happening throughout the day currently, but probably sums up he's got two wins today, so we don't want to do him any uh disjustice. However, probably sums up the level he's at at the moment, Phil, with a sort of a 26 start, followed up with a 100, then a 48, followed up with a 100, then a 96. And just looking at it as well, the, the release still doesn't look that good. It doesn't, but it looks better than it has. So I'm just looking at it now as well. It's the odd one. You can see the odd one coming still coming out funny because it sits in the board at an angle. Yeah. In the in the main, it's it's okay, not perfect, okay, but there's still the the, the flyer that comes out. <clears throat> Bright opportunity though for Chizzy. It was left twenty after fifteen darts. This is on tops. That is the worry with Doughty's now when he's got three darts in hand at a double. And can Glenn punish at the end? Yes, it's on throw, but does it should have won the um Chizzy should have won the lead. It's a 19 dart hold. But then does it will not mind. It gets over the line with that lead. And he's 2 0 in front. As you put it on as well, the featured dame. Kim Hybrett looking good today. 3 0 now in front against Darius Labanos. He's not a great start by either player. Only averaging 90s, Tim, but he's 3 0 in front as we only have two dames that are currently in, in action, which are the last um, two of the top three. Two. So, as it stands, uh, Gezi is 10 grand behind Peter Wright in the rankings. So, he can overtake him um, this weekend, but it would depend on where the two get and. And, and so on but we could have a new world number one this weekend but it would depend on a lot of circumstances well, it's, not, it's not a bad stream game in the last 16 MVG against Johnny Clayton could be worse could be a lot worse so we have two Sorry. last 32 dames, and then we will be going into the last 16. Um, as a couple of those are warming up. Uh, where can you see it live? It's on PDC TV, which is subscription. But it's very much worth the 50 quid a year. I thank her for tickets, priority tickets, and the sort. 
we were speaking uh, a few weeks back to Phil Light about the boom, um, Blackpool ticket sales. Some of those just sold out just to PDC members. So it is certainly worthwhile betting if you are going to these events. And Tim Hobart, they're 4 0 in front against Darius. I was chatting to Jimmy, at, um, who works for the PDC. He says um, ticket sales for New York have gone better than they have in Vegas previously, which is obviously great news. So that's um, yes, yeah, very, very good news. Yeah, very good news. Lloyd says it's not, and just probably to go back to what we were talking about earlier, the amount of tickets sold at the Premier League last night and throughout the opening eight nights have been very good. Um, and the sport is continuing to grow. People wanting to be at the venue when you are seeing these events. And that is certainly one of them, which I'm very jealous that you will be at, Phil. New York, New York. Well, while we're looking after things at all, you're swanning off. It's not right. It's not right. <laughs> oh. To be fair, I can't wait. I genuinely can't. And like I say I was chatting to Dave as well. Um, he does see um, head of media for the PDC. From the Tuesday, we will have full stuff as well. There's going to be media stuff with the players going on, which I'm lucky enough to be going to. So we will have full content from New York as well. Darius Labanostis looks like he took that one bat against Tim Hybrex here. Three visits of 58 for Tim. Left him back on 193 after he started with a 134. And Labanostis has got 104 now after 12. Don't take that, but sets it up. And bat to the streaming down between Duzza and Chizzy. Standard wise, hasn't really changed from the start. Still in consistent stuff from. Both players. Too many darts for Dusser down into that five. Seems to be down the left hand side all the time, Phil. I've not seen many visits of an 81 or a 121. There seem to be more of the fives as we've seen in this lead 45, 85. Um, seems to be swaying a lot more to the left hand side of the board. But he's done opportunity here at 59 for a 3 1 lead. Is Barney going to New York? Um, I doubt it. They haven't announced the full lineup yet, but I don't think so. He plays Jose de Salles the next. Also, Glenn said the next stream game will be Doby against Rids, the Northeast Derby. Love that. Uh, how Glenn starts reaching the board, throwing like that. Look, I think he's just found a way to make it work at the moment. Chizzy starts looking a bit different. Let's have a look. Oh, Glenn, it's very to that messy. Twenty-one darts, and not wrapped up the lead. Just had ten, which is bust. Chizzy on fifty-four. To level this down up at two apiece. And he does. Lendor and two, Dave Chisnell two. After these games are finished, Boise will be chipping off. Gob shouldn't be too long. It's about half between half five and six. Gob will be on. Um I don't think that's quite right. Two seconds. Well, you're looking. Kim Hybrex moves one away against Darius Labanostis. Both averaging around the 90 mark, but it's Tim who's taking his chances. And it's now 5 1. As Phil, you missed the alarm, my friend, on board seven. Sorry, I was looking at something. Two seconds. <laughs> B 
better late than never. Yeah. Um, Chizzy has no gold in his last <laughs> Yeah, Dan, that may just be where they're old and the um, the gold's come out of it because it was only like gold paint. Um, Ashley says, if price goes further than right tomorrow, then um, tomorrow in the next one, he'll be world number one tomorrow. No, because no, if they both get to the final, it's 10 grand between them. So, sit, no, he wouldn't. So it depends on where Wright falls tomorrow and where Gezi gets to. So if they if they both got to the final and Price won it, it wouldn't be enough. Um, I read moving close to that winning line. Will New York be live on TV or recorded? I don't know is the answer. I would assume the latter. Australia's not. Australia's always pre-recorded because it's shown prime time over here. Yeah, true. Yeah. Tim Hybrex wraps up the win on the featured game. So it's Tim Hybrex who progresses through with a 6-1 win over Darius Labanostis. And he will face the winner of the streaming game between Glenn Durans and Dave Chisnell. And Dave Chisnell just found an extra deer at the moment. It was 2-0 behind, but he's now 3-2 in front. And a very good choice of feature down there, Mr. Bars. <laughs> uh, MVG has won the ball. Against Johnny Clayton. This is better, Glenn. This is better. Turn 97, oh, 140. Oh, James, absolutely. It will be live that way. Yeah, completely. <laughs> I've, not, I've not seen the comments. I've not done it up in... It's live, live with a VPN. <laughs> yep. You know. When you know, you know. Glenn has left 32 after 12, but Cheesy's left 84 after 12. Glenn coming back first, hopefully... And clean it up. Oh, Glenn, Glenn, Glenn. Comes inside. Chizzy, 84. Miss a dart at ball, so Glenn will be coming back. There we are, and Glenn cleans it up. Three apiece in that one. We are also underway on board five, which is one of Phil's board with MVG and Johnny Clayton. As you can see, Jose and Barney are underway. Rob Cross and Andrew Dilding and on board one, Madders, Razma, and then Super Mario. And it's Razma who is leading 1-0 to follow on from that win over Derwin Price. Yeah. Um, it's a 12 o'clock start tomorrow. It's only later today because of the Premier League boys. Ooh, break of throw. MVG averaging 115. 2-0 to the good, but Johnny did miss two darts. Why a double eight on both of them? But I like the look of the MVG throw today. The darts pointing the way it should be in his hand. 
that, that's the telltale sign for me at the moment. Yeah, yet to look at it. So still keeping an eye on the cheesy and Durham throw. Unfortunately, it's, though, I've got a feeling it, that that MVG Titan Dane could be over before this one. <laughs> it's, 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 it's as we said, when he pulls it back, it's slightly facing up. When the issue is when it's closed in his hand, yeah. it comes back and it's facing down and he has to whip it through his wrist. Which we'd seen a lot last year. Yeah. From the Dream Machine. Opportunity here for Chisnell to move back in front. Left double eight after five visits. He does a bat on one seven four. Finds a one three four though. So pressure applied. We've seen Cheesy miss three as a double in this game. Will he do it then? Not this time. Cheesy four, then three. Johnny breaks straight back. Um, great leg from both. To be fair. Talking about the pressure on Janssen and then Peter Wright. Pressure on your shoulders when you beat the world champion. But in this one of them to Ratoisty, he started on fire. 104 average, 2 0 in front against the Polish Eagle, who we saw just demolish James Wade with an unbelievable performance. Um, but it's Janssen who's 2 0 in front and he's got the throw. Which could become very important as Ratoisty will need to break. Twice. Looks as if Johnny Clayton has now level us up at two apiece. Just a damn good game of darts, this one. Both players averaging around 113 right now. Oh, Johnny. There we go, Glenn. 180 on throw, complete control. Because Cheesy's only found one treble in nine. Johnny Clayton missed two darts to level us up. MVG pings the 72 from the 134 setup. 109 plays 106 in the averages. Carry on, gents. Carry on. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. Well, then Jansen, very, very impressive. So, some of the darts here was just very impressive. We're toasty to put some pressure on storing, but Jansen cleans up 76 to move 3 0 in front, averaging 102. Glenn's making a bit of a mess, Phil, in this one. However, Cheesy's had 15 darts. He's on 190, with Glenn being on tops after 15. And cleans it up. Uh, one thing that we're not questioning is the cleaning up of Glenn because his doubling's been very good today. It's now four repeats of them, Cheesy. Go on, mate. I know, obviously, he's won two games today. Maybe putting him on the stream board was maybe the worst thing for him. Um, yes, but if there's one of the players you probably want to be playing on there at the moment, Cheesy's probably up there. Yeah. I don't think it's helped either of them if I'm, if I'm being totally fair. I'll say that as Cheesy just flies in a 180 himself. But I, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I think there, there, are, there are concerns for Cheesy for me right now. Yeah, he's, he's not looked himself. Storing hasn't been there. As I'm saying that, obviously commentators terse, just on 180, 134 to leave 187 after six. Um, we've does a bath. Looks like they're both holding Hold them a bit thunder, but... Hold on. Hold on. We could be ferreting Johnny Clayton. Can you? Can you the ferret? 
Oh. <laughs> yeah, you. I, I flicked to it very quickly in that time. Uh, Madders Razma and Ratoisty both took out Tom Plush checkouts in different names. And Cheesy's on for 11 data against Glenn, but can't clean it up. So the standard at the moment is just utterly ridiculous across a lot of these games. MVG's average plummeted in that one because when Johnny Clayton went, look, Michael's first visit was horrendous and Johnny had the darts. And when he goes 180, 180, I'm not sure Michael tried too much on the other two throws. <laughs> Yeah, potentially the case. The switch with a toasty when he does 3 0 down, he just does mental. He's just done 3 yeah. 1 40 to hit. <laughs> Took out the ton plus. I didn't see exactly what it was, but it was certainly a ton plus. He's now done 3 1 40 to leave 81 of them to throw. Oh, Janssen just missed ball for a 164. Can a toasty clear up this 81 for a break of throw? Needs two breaks. 11 dart led from Ratoisty. 106 plays 102. What a game of darts. As Dave Chisnell's one away against Glenn Durant. Does a start 146, Steve. Cheesy 86. Then a 180 from Dave Chisnell. How important could that 180 be? Pressure applied on the does of throw. And Glenn Durant to be in a little bit of trouble. Needs a big visit. 96. So Glenn's 30 points in front. Chizzy now has the darts. MVG's making a bit of a mess of this leg. Clayton wants 61 to break back. Uh, MVG started with a maximum, but then three poor visits, but then Clayton's gone round the houses. MVG 25 to go 5-2. And it does go in two darts. Look. Clayton's had his chances here. This might be 5-2, and don't get me wrong, it's been a very good game. But Clayton has had opportunities. Chisnell and Durant. Cheesy's got 112. Can't take it out. It's Glenn Durant's coming back for 108. This would be, for me, just as impressive as that 120 in his first game today. If you can take this to a decider, taking it 108. Can does that take the 108 with Cheesy back on 65? No, sets it up, leaves double eight. Match darts incoming, you would think, for Dave Chisnell. Though 25, then tops, you would think. But this game certainly had its drama. Will we go to an 11 fled? Or will Chizzy end the run for Glenn Durant? Over to you, Mr. Chisnell. As Janssen moves 4 2 up and then flished off for a toasty. Dave Chisnell takes it out. The run has ended for Glenn Durant. Take a lot of positives from today with two wins. But unfortunately, runs into Dave Chisnell and just doesn't get the same opportunities he did in the other two games. But Glenn Durant departs. Johnny Clayton holds, hits the 58, 5-3. <laughs> um, so, Boise is hopping off. Got stuff to do. This evening, God will be along shortly. So I will fly solo again for a bit. Thanks very much for having me, as always, Mr. Bars, and I will see you then safe in a couple of days. Yes, you will. Um, Are we going to have the... the 
Are we going to have the snow that we've seen? The the uh, or is it now sunshine, mate? Did I bring Marshall? Did I bring Marshall to flip flops for a change? Roger, there was no dress code on the WDF media advisory. Um, MVGs missed two match starts. Clayton twenty five to break. The, oh, the question on that one, well. Phil, is do they know we're coming? Yeah, yeah, no, I've, I've, I've had the, the OK back, but there's no dress code. I, I mean from a social media outlet that we've seen today, not um, actually know we're coming. Oh. Of course we don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, might, I might rock up in my shorts, what do you reckon? Why would that not surprise me? <laughs> um, right it's been a pleasure Mr Bars I will see you on Monday thank you very much for having me yep see you on Monday dude have a good weekend see you later all bye bye Boise departs Jonathan says any reason why um, Rids Dobie haven't started yet yet because it's next on the streaming board mate um, it is on stream board one now, so that won't be too long. Um, we'll put the Ratajski one up as soon as this one is finished. Not a problem, buddy. Not a problem. That's never a good thing, Jamie, is it? So, Jose de Salza defeats Raymond Van Barneveld. And as promised... We go to the Ratajski Janssen game, and it is poised at four apiece. We have the Northeast battle on stream board one. But MVG Jose de Salza first into the last eight here at Players Championship nine. And Janssen's making a move here. Gary Anderson, 3-2 behind against Danny Noppert. Um, our, not a problem at all, Owen. Our pleasure. Uh, finally missed some key doubles. Yep, the opportunity was there. But Ratajski produced a big moment. That's a big break of throw. Danny Janssen looked in a great position there. But the Polish Eagle has soared and he leads 5-4. But needs to follow it up. Ninety-seven, tidy enough. Just waiting for Rids and Doby to get underway. What else have we got? Danny Noppet four-two up on Gary Anderson. Oh, 
but Ratajski is in a promising position here to get the job done. But Janssen just taps him on the shoulder and says, I'm on a finish. Still work to do. But the Tyski 81 leaves a ton. Janssen leaves 60. Does this go for Christoph Ratajski? Oh, 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 missed, I think, by that. He's missed two match darts. He's missed one at tops, come inside, and he's come inside tens as well. And we are level again. Ratoski has missed two match darts and Danny Janssen now has the darts in the decider as he polishes off 60. Andrew Gilding level at four apiece with Rob Cross and Mario Vanden Bongarda is 4-3 up on Manners Rasma. Northeast Derby getting underway on stream board one. Doby against Rids. Last time we've seen these boys on stage today. Any equipment changes? Let's have a look. Dobes, no, box standard, Doby Dart. Let's see if Rids has had a play at all. No. So there we go. Ratajski is in a world of trouble now in this decider. Janssen tees up 64. Ratajski needs a maximum just to apply pressure and hope that Danny Janssen can't take this one out. Remember, Ratajski missed two match starts in the previous leg. And it goes in three. Danny Janssen defeats Christoph Ratajski. And have we got a new Dutchman on the scene in World Darts? Danny Janssen moves into the last eight here of Players Championship number nine. Quick turnaround, Chizzy straight back on. Hollywood takes the opener. It's a bit scrappy. Let's go. Don't think we've had Hybrex on the feature game yet, so we will now. Bit of Chizzy against Kim Hybrex on the feature game. Gary Anderson levels up against Danny Knoppet. That's four apiece. Dobes finds a maximum as well. But welcome along, everyone. If you are new, if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel and drop us a like as well. Plenty of content coming your way over the next week to 10 days. Lots and lots going on. Kim Hybrex takes the opener, but Chizzy starts with a max.
Thought he was going to spoil us. Callum Reds levels it up at one apiece. But Chris Dobie does miss a dart at double 16 for a 2 0 win or 2 0 lead. And it clipped the wire. Nothing between them. Chisel levels up. Noppy is one away. Needs Gary Anderson 5 4. Andrew Gilding has turned this one around. He's now in front against Rob Cross. And Super Mario leads Matters Razma 5 3. <laughs> oh, Gary Anderson departs. Danny Noppert, 6-4 victory as Andrew Gilding as well. 6-4 to Goldfinger. So in the last couple of minutes, some of the big boys have been dropping like flies. We've lost Wotowski, Clayton, Anderson, Barney and Cross all in a matter of minutes. But safely through is Danny Anson, Michael Van Gogh, and Danny Noppert, Jose de Salza, and Andrew Gilding. And three Dutch flags in the last eight will be flying. Just waiting for, for Gob to come along. Chisnell has missed two darts to hold. But then Chizzy misses three to break. Side. Kim Hybrex does hold. Chris Dobie breaks on the stream. Leads Callum Ridge 3 1 1 7 8. Let's see what the setup is. And the setup is perfect 1 3 8 to lead tops. And Hollywood finds tops. But is the Chisnell throw under a little bit of pressure here? Maybe. Just maybe, depending on what this is. Uh, Maddox Rasmus departs. Super Mario is in to the final eight. 6-4 win for Mario van den Bodengarde. Now, Hybrex wants 57 to break and lead Chisnell 3-1. Good game so far. Both over the ton averages. And it goes last die in hand. Kim Hybrex has daylight. And Hollywood is going through the gears. He's now 4-1 to the good against the Riot.
So it's starting to take shape in the final eight. Mario Van der Bogengarde will play the winner of Kim Hybrex and Dave Chisnell. Danny Janssen will play the winner of Chris Dobie and Callan Rids. MVG will play Danny Noppert. Jose de Souza will play Andrew Gilding. Whilst that is also going on, let's hop over to Niedenhausen and have a look. Who oh, has? Has. No. Please do it this way. Yep, Scott Williams has gone early in this one. Lee Evans is still in. Also, Sebastian Brilowetsky is into the last 16. He will play Lee Evans on the Challenge Tour. Jamie Lewis still in as well. Carol said the Jack Kenny Neons as has taken shape over in Niedenhausen. But let's keep you up to speed here. Chizzy has found a break back. And that there sums up Dave Chisnell. 26, 180. Hollywood looking set against Callum Rids. And it is 5-2. Dovey on the cusp of victory against his northeast buddy. Uh, not very well by the look of it, Daniel. He's out today. But can Hybrex pop? Pop a little 1-4-5 for 4-2. Chisnell sat on 24. Nope, but... Chisnell levels up at three apiece. Going to have to find another break of throw as this one is going the distance. Hollywood is in complete control. And I fully expect this to say 6-2 in the very near future. In fact, any second now. As Doby looks at double 10. And there we go. Second dart, Chris Doby, 6-2 winner over Callum Rids. 103 average for Hollywood as he dispatches of the riot. So there is only one place left in the last eight. Will it be Hybrex? Will it be Chisnell? And the first streaming board game will be Jose de Souza against Andrew Gilding. Good stuff from Hollywood. But 95 would put Chisnell in front. Again, that scoring leg tells you all you need to know when your action is suspect. When you get it right, it's brilliant. When it's off, it's off. 46, 140, 40, 180, 39. That's the issue when fundamentally your throw is not solid.
And Kim Hybrex moves within two legs of the last eight. Chat room, in your opinion, what you've seen today, who's favourite from here? Is it MVG? Is it the Souza? Or is it someone else? Let us know in the chat room. Who you think is going to get the job done? It will be MVG Danny Noppet, the other streaming game on board number one. But Chisnell may be feeling the pressure a little bit here. A lot of love for Dobie in the chat room. Playing well right now. Kim Hybrex is also playing well. Let's have a sneaky little look. What else? Dobes closing in on Glenn Durrant, 31 in the rankings. Wanted to look at that. one. No, 84 for Chizzy to level us up. Should get a dart of the ball. May get two at 12s. He's got it. We don't know which way he's gone. Three darts suggest to me. May, may have gone the ball. Again, big, big strides here. Chris Dobie pulling clear of Maddox Razma in the race for the match play as well. Four apiece. Best of three. Where's your 20p in the remaining last 16 game? Uh, another good run in the bar. They just can't seem to get past the Salza. No. Uh, England got USA in their group. Interesting. Hybrex just keeping himself in front. Remember, he has the darts. Chisler was going to have to find a break of throw. But with darts like that, it's going to have to be a very, very good leg from Chisnell on the Kim Hybrex throw. No finish either. So, Hybrex to go within one of victory, leaving Chizzy at the point of no return. Again, say about professional misses, not the best, leaving double five. Um, is Peter Wright and Gary Anderson still in the darts? No, they both lost, Alistair. Oh, Kim, Kim, Kim. Can Chizzy pop the champagne finish? This would be something special. Leaves tops, but again, Hybrex got himself in a muddle at the end of this leg. Oof, last start in hand. Chizzy would have been thinking, stood there. Gonna get a go at this and like a knife through the heart. 
Kim Hybrex finds it. Last start in hand. Man, Chizzy, no room for error. You have to be perfect. Have to. But Chizzy finds back to back one forties. Just had the message from Gob. He's just finishing his food. He's on the way back. Be about fifteen minutes. Chizzy down to a finish. But one eighty, one big one seven one. All right, none of them, none of the above. I was going to say could. The door was just there. There was a there was a crack of light where he could have applied some pressure. But you'd fancy Chizzy to level us up here and send us to that all-important noble leg. Brilliant, brilliant setup play from Dave Chisnell. One, two, eight to leave 36. And are we going all the way? As the quarterfinals get underway on the stream board or board two, especially. But Dave Chisnell does send us all the way. Now, Kim Hybrex, how's your nerve? You have the darts and only 58. I know it's only the first visit. Is that the killer moment early on? He's under pressure, but it could have been worse. Better. But if this is two trebles, Hybrex has an issue. Hybrex has an issue. Now he needs to find something big. This 309 may need to disappear in six darts, and it doesn't. Dave Chisnell has been chasing his tail over the last 10 legs, and then right at the death, is it all over? Has Chisnell saved the best till last? Oh, my. In a deciding leg. You've thrown 12 darts and nine of them are trebleless. Dave Chisnell tees up tops. Didn't need to do anything heroic. One forty, but is it too little, too late from Hybrex? Yes, it is. Dave Chisnell is the last name in the hat for the last eight. Kim Hybrex will be kicking himself. He was bossing that game for large, large parts. Danny Knopper has broken the MVG throw in the opening leg. Remember, we've seen some magic from MBG today. We've also seen some mediocre stuff. Tidy little finish from Danny Nopper. Jose de Salza takes the opener against Andrew Gilding. Early, early doors. MVG's in bother here. Just the way it's going. Danny's record against Michael is very good. MVG 
MVGs in a spot of bother early doors. Noppy now for two nil. And it is two zip. Danny Nopper in control. Um, Connor is in the chat room. Hope you are good, buddy. Played some good stuff today. Uh, Danny Jansen warming up against Chris Doby. Oh my, something going on here. MVG was brilliant to beat Johnny Clayton. However, now he's up against it. MVG needs to find a maximum or a 1-7 something here otherwise staring at a double break depending on what this score is that may be just enough if he can back it up but if this is something big from noppy mvgs in all kinds of bother mm. it's a finish but it could have been a lot lot worse what you give for a 171 now that will do I'm considering the start to the leg. Oh, one, two, three. Considering the start to the leg. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. we'll have a look at the stream in a minute. But it looks as if or Danny Noppet has missed the ball for the big fish. And MVG has made an absolute pig's ear. Of 88. And it is 3 0. It's a double break of throw. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm all right. Thanks, Jonathan. MVG didn't even get a dart of the ball at that 88. Uh, absolutely, Connor. Absolute top, top guy. When are you heading to Lakeside, mate? MVG needs to start motoring here. Uh, Dobie and Danny Anson are underway as well. Jose and Andrew Gilding won a piece. It's not a, not a classic. One forty, and there's pressure on this one oh five again. Leaves tops. Will he get a go? Will he get a go, or does this ninety five go? Big moments here. Huge moments. Doesn't go. How are we doing, 40? Hope you are well, mate. MVG does get a break back, but he's still a break behind. <laughs> 
New Town in from winner. Danny Knopper, 3 1 to the good. Danny Anson takes the opener against Doves. Again, scrappy from both. This is where you earn your money. It's been a long day. The winning line is in sight. Two, six, five a piece. Nothing between them. Visits of 140 and 96 from both of them. I had to say, MVG, maybe. I was in trouble. Could still be if the 1 3 2 goes. Has he missed the dart of the ball? We'll have a look in a minute. But this 48 needs to go. And he's gone round the houses. And again, I don't understand MVG's. Logic there. I think he's a better 32 hitter at the moment than he is. Tops. He's come inside tops. Come inside tens. And he's 4 1. No, didn't get a dart. But MVG now is in a whole world of trouble against Danny Knoppert. A couple of mistakes. And then she got a bit of emotion from Noppy. He knows how big that could be. Andrew Gilding, Jose de Salza, two apiece. Just a, just a tad slow, this one. Um, Dobes has leveled it up against Danny Janssen. Uh, Super Mario and Chizzy also warming up. Oof. Is Noppy going to do it again to MVG? Oh, there's just something about Noppy's pace and rhythm that Michael doesn't like. But now, Andrew the sleeper. Yeah, look, obviously he's a great player, but he's in the bracket of players I don't enjoy to watch because it's a bit too slow for my liking. MVG looking like a comfortable hold of throw, but this aren't this is on the important legs. He has to find something away. He's got to be perfect from here, but then you have to do the damage on the knop at throw. So MVG to get one back. Does get one back, but still has a lot 
a lot of work to do from here. And that's not what you want to you see your opponent hitting two trebles. But in the past, we've seen MVG produce fireworks from this position. But not when your opponent's doing that. And only a 60. Stick a fork in it. This one's done. All last eight games are now underway as well. Only a maximum hurts Danny Knopper. 140 only put some level and not even a finish. They knock it, tees up 52, will get, should get two match starts. What pressure will it be under? Not enough. Start the car. And it goes, MVG departs, Danny Noppet moves on. Look, I'm going to put the Andrew Gilding game on, but I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to watch it because I'd rather watch paint dry. So I'm going to keep an eye on Doby and Janssen for a minute and Super Mario and Chizzy. Dobes finds a maximum. And this game looks as if it's going to three apiece. Again, Dobes professional misses. Oh, no, my bad. Sorry, scorer error. I was about to bash Dobes then, take it all back. Uh, three apiece with that Danny Anson, but Chris Doby will have to find a break of throw. Uh, Sam, if you watch our streams regularly, mate, I say that about all slow players. I do not enjoy watching them play. I always say they're fabulous players because they're there for a reason, but I do not enjoy watching them. There's a whole host of players that I bash for being slow. And unfortunately, Andrew Gilding's one of them. Uh, uh, gobs on the way, Dan. Danny Anson, the mullet to be feared, is producing... On his own throw. Dobes finds a maximum. Danny Anson, 96 to leave tops. Chris Dobie, 130. This can be a nice one for the pros. It's only one treble for a dart of the ball. And it goes big, big moments. We say the 130 are the nice finishes because the one two ones in that range, it's just one treble single for a dart at the ball. And Hollywood has produced a Hollywood moment. But then only scores 31. Remember, a break's not a break. Uh, 
Uh, correct, he was TK, which is why he was never one of my favourites. Again, amazing player, but not one of my favourites. Chris Doby, what have you done? Hi, darling. Hello. How are you doing? I'm very good. How are you? Marvellous. Have you missed me, chat room? Um, must have hated Dennis Priestley. Uh, not to a degree. Back in Dennis Priestley's day, the early days, slow players were a lot more common, God, weren't they? These rat attack tat players You're weren't... 20 years older than me. Don't ask me about your era. But, but you, you've still watched them, though. You, you had Jockey, with, which was eccentric and stuff like that. But slower, slower players were more common yeah. in the earlier days. Um, Gil, yeah, no, look, I've, I've never said Gilding isn't a good player, and he is playing really well. I would just rather stick my fingers in a light socket than watch him play. <laughs> I've missed you, Phil. <laughs> Let's be fair, though. I'd say I'm consistent. I say about all slow players. Yeah, true. Uh, Danny Anson breaks straight back. Hollywood's good work. All undone. And Andrew Gilding gets over the line. Would you like Janssen and Doves or Chizzy and Super Mario? Actually, we can do it both because there's only two games. Ignore me. Just need to announce this. We're starting early. What's that? Have you seen what I just put in the chat room? We're starting early. All right. Oh, God, stop it. <laughs> Hopefully, Southgate's been sacked. Oh, but... It's coming home. <laughs> Phil, what would be your um, eight all-time slowest players in a Premier League style tournament? Oh, right, my Premier League from hell. Just, just get it. Just working it out now. What have I missed today? Um, it's been a decent day, to be fair. Um, at times, it was a bit seed again. In. Um, the seeds would play really well, then, then tumble. In the matter of five minutes, we lost Rob Cross, Barney, Gary Anderson, Clayton, Rids and Ratajski. Holy. 
Gildan's on stream. Since Danny Nopper. I'm just That's having up. a little look at the challenge, yeah. actually. It's still on as well. We are midway. Well, last eight right. of... God, surely that that's not right. Right? Gildan just lost, didn't he, to Jose? I know no, I've only been here a couple of minutes. Right. I don't know what's going on. No, no. no Danny Anson beats Chris Dobie as well, by the way. Um, Andrew Gildan has just played his quarter final on stream board two. And to put him back on stream board two for his semi-final doesn't normally happen. But saying that, Danny Nopper played his quarter-final on stream board one. They've got themselves yeah. in a muddle there. Yeah, they've messed that. They've they've got themselves in a in in, in a muddle. Now, does have won two games? Yeah, I've, I saw that one on social media. 6-4 lost to Chizzy. Not horrendous. Yeah. Hang on. Are we moments away from a Mario van den Bogard, a Danny Anson, Danny Nopper, and Andrew Gilding semi-final lineup? Correct. What the hell has happened? Oh, that last 16 is a bit brutal. We lose Cross, Barney, yeah. Gando, Clayton, Rids, Ratowski, Hybrex, and Rasma. Yeah, the, the, the draw wasn't good today. Hmm. Well, I mean, it's not a bad draw, but normally... How many of those would you expect to go the other way, normally? Simon Whitlock hit a nine data. Saw that one. He hasn't tweeted about it yet. Probably still annoyed because he lost. Yeah. That's um, well, I need three more for my eight slowest prem or what I wouldn't like to watch. Slowest prem? Easy. Or slow stroke pouring. So far, I've got a strong top five gone. <laughs> Jar, you get battered everywhere you go. <laughs> Slowest thing. So, so, so far, God, I've got Pipe, Gilding, Mansell, Mensa, and Gaulas. Who have you got? Pipe. Pipe, Gilding. Gilding. Yeah. Mansell. Mensa. Yeah. Gaulas. Do they have to be current players? Uh, or is it top eight? No, no, players? no it's fine. Like... What's that? Okay, so we... Hmm. To be fair, Chisnell's rode his luck today. The Chisnell throw, uh, oh yeah, I'm hundred percent Danny, I'm with you there. Um, Chisnell's rode his luck today, and his action looks horrific today. Does it? The the, the pause at the backswing is too long today. Danny Smith, yeah, good shout, Ryan. Right, yeah, I'm with you both on that one. Completely. Got a couple of suggestions. Just trying to think if there's any more out there. He's not very quick. Okay, I don't mind your five. I think your choices for your other three are Terry Downs. But he didn't Ryan play PDC, Meeple. did he? I've just gone PDC. No. Okay. 
Ryan Meikle, Dennis Smith. Yeah. I don't think yeah. Lauren Lurch back as that pick, is he? No, he's not. No, he's not. Zor- he's in. Zoran Lurch back up. Yeah. Ron Moolenkamp. R- Ron Moolenkamp takes a while for such a simple throw. Yeah. And I've got one that isn't PDC anymore, just is still playing. Andy Hamilton. Oh, yeah. Good show. There's a few good few good there. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Can we do the opposite? Can we go for the fastest eight players you can think of in the world? Fastest eight for a Premier League? Yeah. Uh, Tizzy goes 4 2 in front. Oh, I don't mind that shout from Scottish Smurf. Well, I've, I've, I've got a few here, but obviously Ricky Evans stands out like a sore thumb. I've got five that are definitely in. They're the first five that come to my mind. And then I've got a list of another five that you could possibly add a couple more to. Yeah, I've, I've got some guarantees and some ones that when they're in free flow are quick. Does that make sense? Yeah. I think two. I think two. Everyone will agree on Ricky Evans, Vincent Van der Voort. See, Vinny's in my other five. I think oh, there okay. are four quicker than Vinny, naturally. Right. So Ricky Evans, I think we're all agreeing on. Yeah. Yeah, Ricky Evans is definitely in there. Keen Barry. He's he's number two. Yeah. Danny Lalby. He's in my five, yeah. Leighton Bennett. He's in my other five. So you've got Van der Voort and Bennett from them so far. Michael Smith. He's in my other five. Adrian Lewis. Wasn't written down yet, but in free flow I can go with it. Yella Klassen. In my other five. There's Gary Anderson. Wasn't written down, but could be considered in the five. But I don't think he's anything exceptionally quick compared to others. Um, and a recent one, which the more and more I watch him, Callum Riggs doesn't set the dark he's enough in, for me. He's in my five. He was one of the first players that came to mind. Yeah. So you've missed one of my top five. Who have I missed? Jeffrey Desvan. Yes. I straight yeah, I'm with you there. Yeah, I I'm fully behind that one. Yeah, and then a few other shots in the chat room. Uh I've got Clear Macker on my other five. Yeah, I can. I think if you put Vinny there, Clearmac is very, very close, and yeah, then Humphrey. 
yeah, Humphreys is definitely a shout. But yeah, Jeffrey Desvan is, is the one that I think yeah. missed there. Van Gerwen at full flow. Look, Van Gerwen, Anderson and Price can vary their pace and whatever, but I don't I wouldn't consider them out and out speedsters. No. Watermana, yeah, I forgot about him to be fair. He needs to slow down a bit. His yeah, balancing point in his heart is really weird. I didn't like it. I think that's yeah, why they hit fully, fully get behind that one. Any more fast players? Brian Roman? Not over. Oh, I can't believe I've missed this fella. Stephen Bunting. Early days. Early. Early. He sets the dart a lot more now. There's definitely, yeah. after the manu not the manufacturer change, but the barrel change that the manufacturer introduced to their entire team. After yeah. he went back, definitely more specific about what he's doing. But early yeah. days. Uh, uh, Stephen Bunting. Early Bunting, yeah. Uh, early Bunting, I, I can get behind. Cammy, we missed Menzies. Yeah, our oh, Menzies is in there, yeah. Or does he just look quick because he's constantly bouncing around? He does set the dart somewhat, more than most of them. But it, it's a quick set. It's, it, it's there. It's a little rock and it goes. Little rock and it goes. Yeah. He played very well today as well. I think he, the more I watch him, he's a huge danger at Lakeside. We did. I did uh, say Clear Mackie, yeah. Yeah, I can. I can get behind them. Lisa, I don't think it's Lisa. I don't think Lisa's over quick. She's not slow, but I wouldn't say she's. I out of that list we we've made, who do you think the quickest is? Barry sets the dart a little bit now. 18 months ago, he definitely would have been in the conversation. For me, having don't tried think it's to... Aaron, and I don't think it's Desvan. I still think there's a hesitation with Desvan. I think it'll be very, very close with how quickly they can just get the darts from... The, the thing with Barry, Desvan, Ritz, they have very, very quick throwing action. But their transfer is quite wide. Yeah. Lauby and Evans have such a small gap to get between where they hold the dart and get it out. For me... I think it will be very, very close between Danny Lauby and Ricky Evans. Ronnie Baxter. Lauby is the one. <laughs> Ronnie Baxter could well be in the other conversation in the, in the slow eight. Lauby's the one for me. Having having tried to produce him on the live league and having to press buttons that quickly. I, I swear sometimes dart three left his hand before dart two hit the board. So I said, it's that transfer to get it into your throwing hand that, that him and Ricky Evans have just got so much quicker than anybody else. Yeah. Oh, look, another win for Scott Williams on the challenge tour. Yeah, Claston's in the conversation, I think. But he has quite a loopy part to the throw. It looks quick. He gets through the air quick. But...
any more for any more. That's about it then. What's going on in Challenge Tour 7? Let's give you a quick update with that one. Quarterfinals, Sebastian Biawetsky has beaten Kenny Nines 5-1. Stefan Belmont has beaten Tony Alton as 5-1 as well. Carol Sedacek's just won 5-2 against Jeremy van der Winkel. And Nathan Gervin, after making the quarterfinals earlier on in the day, is currently 2-1 up against Michael Flynn as well. Flynn also having a good day. Um, that win for Sedlacek will mean he takes on Sebastian Biowetsky and Belmont will play the winner of Gervin and Flynn. Yeah. Um, to be fair, Johnny, I actually hate to say this, but yeah, you are right, but I'm not going to mention him, but you are right. <laughs> Chris Lambman's not too slow, actually. That's a good shout. Chris Lambman's not what I expected Chris Lambman to look like either, which is a, which is a weird thing. Yeah. <laughs> you just had an image of him in my head, and he's not what I thought. This is an absolute war of attrition for Dave Gisner right now. To set up a tie with Danny Anson. The mullet. Honestly, when, when Chiz is on the streaming board, Joel, if it's the same as the one that I watched, it looked horrific against Daza. The action looked so bad. Could put a Lagen in the slow one, potentially. I think a couple of... I can't remember specifically Malik who Dems. it is, but I think a couple of the Chinese Malik guys Dems who qualified for the last few years have not been quick. Who? Hey? Malik Dem's slower uh, than a Only just if he is. Lukeman gets rid of him, yeah. slow players have there been in darts that have been good to watch? Taylor is one for me from Jonathan. Good question, actually. John Norman Jr.? John Part was never the quickest, was he? No, I didn't like. I never liked John Part's action. That mm. ne never a fan. Mardle, everything but his throw was quick, but because he has such a large like feathering of the dart, yeah, the time between dart one and dart three actually isn't that quick. He doesn't look like a slow player, but there is certainly time on there. As Dave Chisnell completes the quarterfinals lineup, he will take on Danny Janssen. And Danny Knockout will take on Andrew Gooden. Robert Richardson, good point. Rusty Jake, all of the RJRs. They are not a slow family. No. Hamilton in Dennis the prime slope. Yes. Yeah. 100%. Oh, we said. Yeah, we said it when it was in the comments, John. Yeah, Rob Cross in full flow. I'm not sure he's the quickest because of the old step back and everything in between. I think he's if he just lets some go, he's all right. I think it's the constant back wipe your hand. Mm hmm. Sebastian Belowetsky against Carol Sedlacek warming up. Scott Mitchell, yeah. Wolfie's not the quickest. No. Scott Waits is pretty quick, though. Or can be. Can be, yeah. 
He's one that can vary his pace to suit. So we have two semi-finals in the Pro Tour. It will be Chizzy against Danny Janssen, Danny Noppert against Andrew Gilding. Wish me luck trying to make a graphic for this one, God. Hmm. As a lady plays currently somewhere that takes four minutes to throw three darts. Shit the bed. Oh, Rod Harrington. I think gonna... I might be able to send you a video that you can play that is genuinely of a guy that used to play at Riley's in Nottingham. One of my favourite ever's is actually quite slow. We forgot Priestley in the conversation is slow. Nico. Yeah. Which group chat is in? This one. Whilst these games are warming up, Dobbs, should we put a bit of challenge tour on the screen? Yeah, let's do it. We're going to treat you all to a bit of challenge tour action while we wait for the Pro Tour semi finals to kick off. Nathan Gerben. Oh, who was the Russian dude? He was slow. Arashkin. That's the one. Was a rash kid. Russian back here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Ellie's not quick, yeah. Right. I'm just going to the loo quickly, Bob, because I've been waiting for you to get here. <laughs> and then we're back to some semi final action. So, well, indeed. All right, let's trash the place. I got enough Coca Cola. I can't lie, it's left over from the vodka last night. I didn't have time to go and get anything else. I should really be drinking water nowadays, but it is what it is. Stream board one will be Dave Chisnell, Danny Janssen. Stream board two, Danny Nopper, Andrew Gilding. Take your pick if you have PDC TV. We'll have both of them on screen for you, most likely. Uh, who wants a poll? For the final four. Also, England are winning the World Cup. That's a lovely draw, just in case you weren't watching. How many boys are left in the Challenge Tour 4, I believe? Let me just drop back. That's what we're watching now. Flynn Gervin is a semi-final. No, it's not. It's quarter-final. So it is. A, it's the last quarter-final. 
the winner of Flynn and Gervin will take on Stefan Belmont and Sedlacek and Bioetsky are in the other half. Um, they've just started their semi-final. Who wins from here? We have Chisnall. I've not seen... Well, I saw a frame of the snooker, Jonathan. I can't lie. When somebody said Ronnie was on fire when this stream first started, I put Phil on mute for about 10 minutes. Uh, saw Ronnie complete frame four and heard that he'd just gone a little bit berserk, but I'd put this back on by then. And I could have multi screen because I was working, so... Um... Is Gervin the Scottish one from the Live League? He is. And to be honest, I spent the rest of the day just avoiding nonsense. Oh my God. Bloody April Fool's Day has done me in. Because it's not your first thought sure. constantly. When you spend, a, I'm on social media a lot without actually posting. Like I have less than thousand people follow me on Twitter. Bragging, but I don't tweet an awful lot. I just use it for information and to follow other people. And then I follow like three and a half thousand accounts just to use it as a news feed effectively. And the amount of like posts about Mbappe going to Newcastle and all sorts, and then God knows what. What's up, darling? What train are you getting and where to next week? Uh, I'm going to Reading. About 20 past seven, I think. I'm just thinking that... Do you want me to pick you up on the way back from Leeds? Reading's further out your way than Newbury, though. It's not a million miles. If I can check in at that time, then yeah, I'm not bothered. It's up to you. So I haven't booked anything yet. We'll, we'll sort it tomorrow. Sort it one day. Yeah, because obviously I'm driving straight back from Leeds. I thought you only drove as far back as Sheffield on the, on the night off. No, if anything within four hours, I'll drive. Look on your face. You think Leeds is further, don't you? It can be done. No, just all over the place, then. Huh? I don't know. <laughs> Depends if I need to do anything Thursday night. If I need to do anything Thursday night, I just get down to the club for anything, then maybe. Oh, yeah, no, it's, it's just up to you. That's all. It was just not the few. Let me speak to Robbie and Kyle, oh, and I'll let you know. Why they do the event on a Friday? It's normally only two per week. It is, but the Euro Tours are back. They're trying to sneak more TV events in. They're trying to get a certain number of Pro Tours done before certain cut-off points within the year. And as the calendar keeps growing, you get more and more weekends blocked out for Challenge Tour and Dev Tour and Women's Series. Um, the feeling within the PDC is that at some point, this tour needs to become 100% professional. And that means Pro Tours in the week. Pro tours in the week, big events on the weekend. That's the only way to keep this calendar moving. And I think that's closer than you think as well. I don't think anything. It's dangerous. Uh, but Jonathan, it, it was never, um, it's not two, two and a half hours. Normally, I can do Birmingham in two hours. I just shaved off 25 minutes coming home last night. So, not to Oxford is two hours, two and a half hours. Yeah. And then what part of Oxford you go in? So. Especially you just pick up the M40 from Birmingham, don't you? There's no messing around. M40, A34. Course, 
that, and the 34 is not even a a route that's got a million roundabouts on, like the A43 or something. No. So yeah, right now in my house to the mid to Birmingham city centre, um, and bear in mind this is rush hour on a Friday, it's saying fastest two hours eleven minutes. But on the Apple map, there's loads of red and amber, and that's still two hours eleven minutes. So yeah, but hour and thirty five I thought was good. Uh, what car do I drive? I just drive a two-litre Ford Focus. Nothing amazing. Just beats me up and down the country everywhere I need to go. The, the, the amount of miles I do, there is no point having a good car or a nice car. No, because then you'd have to look after it, Phil. It just gets humped. I say that when I've just got like strategically placed things in my room that are hidden by like the drawers behind me and the bed. That's rubbish, but I know what it's like, so. Um, right, are we close to Pro Tour starting again? Warming up. Yeah, both of them showing us warming up. Oh, we've there we go, live. there's the stream. Definitely live. I mean, Binks refereeing on one. Is Andrew Davies on two? It's not, is it? Luke something. Yeah, uh, no, it's, um, that's Luke. I think it's Luke Guest. Yeah, that's the one. When you get a chance, have a look at the Chizzy action. How much in gas? No, I don't, I don't look. I never look at it, mate. I just, when my light comes on, I just put more in. Danny Anton is going to have serious issues later in his career. With that wrist position. Yeah. It's not nice. What do you reckon of the Chizzy backswing? Ooh. He's going to hurt himself. Too long, isn't it? Too paused. It's just it's nasty. It, that, that, this is the worst day Chisnell's throw has looked in a long, long time, I think. Uh, price per litre over here at the moment is about £1.80. Uh, 161 I drove past about half an hour ago. Jar got it as cheap as 158 in Nottingham. He's petrol though, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, mine's, mine's diesel. Oh, that makes me Top think. Gear I'm glad approved. you said Wait a minute. Top hey, Gear does not low. approve. So I leave myself a note to pay the Birmingham low emission fee. Does anyone know how Gildan is playing so well this year? No, because he, he didn't look that good on the challenge last year, did he? No. He's got quite a just a solid base for a throw. He's, he's always got those points he can go back to, but I don't enjoy watching him play. I can't lie. Our TV companies hate him. Because where he stands so far to that side, he blocks the camera. Yeah, look, I'm not going to lie, I'm quite lucky that where I'm self-employed, I can just charge my petrol and mileage against my tax. Who 
who's marketable. Not sure there is much marketable about him. Gildan's got his thumbs up, but... Sure that one. Don't get me wrong, Dan Dawson liking you on Twitter does not equate to marketability. <laughs> I'm saying is I think that Andrew Gilding may fall into Barry's category of I'll change the rules. Speaking of Dan Dawson, I feel a little bit sorry for him. This is not going to be the easiest winner to interview, no matter who it is. No. There are certainly Final Fours that you will get more out of the winner than you will these unless it's Danny Janssen perhaps Noppy doesn't say a great deal no Gildin can be quite awkward Chizzy everyone knows Chizzy These semis are pretty one sided at the minute, though. Dave Chisnell finds himself 3 0 behind to Danny Anson, averaging just 87. But it is good news for one player in yellow, Andrew Gildin, 2 0 up on Danny Noppert. You've done it again, Phil, by the way. On oh, screen, well you've got board two and then board one. So everybody, like me, has got board one scoring, board two scoring, board one streaming, board two streaming, and yours is the opposite way around on screen for everybody watching at home. All right. <laughs> You see the James Wade lookalike thing this morning? Yes. <laughs> I actually thought Wade was very, very good in it. Yeah, no, he was, yeah. Like, <laughs> without being too disrespectful, the guy from Juicens in the video was so robotic. Like, you could tell he was reading and didn't really know what he was saying. It just didn't flow very well when they had that little, like, mini interview style part of the clip with him. Yeah. The whole James bit flowed really well. Like, the time, like, he's, he's got good comedic timing. But the Juicens guy, yeah, yeah the, the way that he was um, emphasizing the wrong parts of the, the sentences and things, like, that's not how you do it naturally. Yeah. Well, one Danny Anson. Dave Chisnell with 12 dart leg to get his first on the board, I believe it was. But immediately Danny Anson breaks straight back as well. Oh, I watched 
was Danny Anton like that wrist is like that, isn't it? It's like mm. super so open. Which well, how bad is the shadow to that on the boards as well? That sort of appeared in Germany and haven't really got rid of it. No. Funny enough, but missing plenty of darts at double against Andrew Gildin. Finds himself 3-0 behind, averaging just 84. I heard a it's, weird it's... story about Andrew Gildin a few years ago. That when he went to pro tours and stuff, he'd buy like two cooked meals, be it takeaways or whatever, early on in the day. And he'd have one for lunch. And then instead of shopping again or paying delivery fee or whatever, what he'd do is put the iron on in the hotel, wrap a towel around it, put it up the right way and effectively use it as a hot plate all day to keep his food warm. <laughs> How does he not burn the hotel down? I don't know. But you know when something's like so random, you're like, nobody could have possibly made that up. Yeah. It, it just has to be true. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. God, obviously, like we've got the World Series in Australia, um, America. Today, there's been Dutch flags all over the place. If there was a World Series event in Holland. Which eight do you invite as the representatives? Ooh. Okay. I say that because there were so many Dutch flags around today, it was unreal. Your top four are easy. I'm just writing down every Dutch player I can find so that I can make an informed decision. they got on the dev tour anybody special at the minute I don't think so meant to be van to go the next big one won it but mm. i'd like to see it I, I wouldn't like to see it just be the top eight i don't think Oh, they got Kevin Dutz. Yeah. 
Jürgen, Jürgen van der Velta. Gallus. Roloff's mate? No, I can't see it. It's my right name down anyway. You're not in the top 32, you're not getting considered. Rebecca. Two, three, four definite. I think you can go five for him. I wouldn't pick him, but I think he would. I'd like to see him because he can go berserk. I think I'd like to see him more than anyone else that's left for him. Yeah, let's go here. Okay, top four, Dirk Van Dyve and Boda. Danny Nopper. Vincent Van Der Voort, Martijn Kleermacher. Don't think you're going about those four. Five, I've got uh -huh. Barney. Go on, yeah, yeah. I'll say a bit afterwards. Six, I personally wouldn't pick him, but I don't see how you can ignore him with given his ranking in comparison to everybody else, is Jeffrey Desvan. Get there again this year, but I'm, I'm not convinced yet. Seven, I picked Kevin Dutz. And eight, I've gone Danny Janssen just over Gert Nenjes. I would have left out Ron Moulinkamp. I've left out Neil Zonneveld. Van Tegel's not really done a lot for me. And then I was looking at Jurgen van der Velde, Owen Rudolfs and uh, Verberk, but I'm just not sure they're there yet. I did miss Kyvenhoven, but I'm not sure he's that entertaining either. But at that point, would Noppy not make it in as a PDC pick? Potentially? I don't think so. Although he did win UK Open, so he could possibly sneak into that one. Yeah, I'll put Noppy in the PDC 8 with Michael, and I'll sneak Kyvenhoven in where Noppy was. So there's 10 Dutchmen in a field of 16 players. Tidy. So was that 140 Danny Nopper just took out? Exceptional. I was going to say Noppy's level, Two, three of and Chizzy could Chizzy could be as well here. Big mm. moments here because Danny Anson has fallen off a cliff a little bit here. Still averaging 98. Chisnell's just upped it massively. Raphael Van der Vaart, what a shout! One of Big one. Of, I've, I've not been jealous of Tottenham very often in my life, but when they signed Van der Vaart, he was a wizard. That's still the dodgiest transfer in the history of the Premier League as well. I remember the dead, oh, deadline was at five. This was the old school before there was like proper deadline sheets. Quarter yeah, to yeah. five, we're going to put them. No, nothing going on here. Everyone's gone home. Five to five. They're trying to sign Rafa van der Vaart. Six o'clock, done. He's there with a shirt. I like how Aston Villa do transfer business right now. Literally, nobody knows. Nobody breaks it. They put it on Twitter. We've signed this player. You're like, where the hell did that come from? Yeah. To be fair, we must be getting into darts transfer time soon, haven't we? We haven't had any for a while. Manufacturers? Yeah. I don't know. No, there aren't many that sign contracts mid-season. They normally sign, sign, sign fixed-term contracts until the World Championships. 
Yeah, but that's what I mean. But after the Worlds, we must be due because we haven't had any for a while. So we must be due. Some changes, I think. Mm -hmm. Might they not chuck a few yeah, Belgians in? I don't think so. Not in front of a... I appreciate what you're trying to say, but who are you Belgians for consideration? Gimme, who very likely could already be in as a PDC-8. Kim... Mario, there's one more Belgian. Brian Roman. Not sold. Is there not one competing with Kim for World Cup team? You've got Super Mario now on the Pro Tour as well. Who took out 164? Andrew killed it. How did he miss it? It's right in front of us. Let's stop. I've got to stop writing lists. This is a Monday night <laughs> thing for you. Distract. I've come on. I've missed a 164. She's not one away, by the way. First to seven reminder, folks. Mike to Decker. He played really well today. I, Mike Decker for a long, long time was comparable with Gimme, especially in terms of dev talk. But I think those two being in the same stable, as well as having their success, possibly didn't help. I think if they'd been rivals instead of friends, you get yourself up you for that. it a little bit more. Yeah. Big moments with Danny Janssen then save the match with this 80. And it goes. We go to the side of Chisnell with the darts. Oh. God, I don't often big up who follows me on Twitter, but someone's just followed me and I'm over the moon with this one. That means it's a footballer. No. But someone didn't follow me. Barry? Makuru. Oh. I know, ba ba Baza followed me ages ago. <laughs> oh, <it's fine. laughs> no one followed me. I don't, I don't say enough, to be fair, but... Advantage Janssen. Just what Chizzy would give for another two treble visit. Oh, the big Bye. stick into the treble five. I don't, to be honest, once you're in that treble five, I don't think there's a lot else you can do apart from firing two more no. trebles. But depends when he hit that as well. Let's have a look in a second. First start was a single. There's not a lot he can do after that. Last start, he got greedy. Danny Anson, massive chance here. 92 for the match. Oh, he takes it in three. 12 darts, a superb back to back legs from Danny Anson. It looked like he'd thrown that one away, but he is into the final and potentially joining him very, very soon. 
is Andrew Gilding. If you pick those two as your finalists today, go and buy yourself a lottery ticket. It is an eight million pound rollover in the UK right now. I was gonna, I was gonna say if you pick that one. Quadruple rollover. Both players having the same amount of darts. So doubling that one with a chizzy. Chizzy with more 180s, but he's 6 from 16 on the double draw. Jansen, 7 from 16. As the Dutchman puts himself into the final. Uh, how did Makura get on this week? She started off brilliantly. Started to tail off towards the back end of the week a little bit. Um, first day, she looked very, very good. Caught a few people by surprise, I think. Phil was immediately tweeting me after I said that Bo Greaves had already won the WF World Championship without even turning up. Um, not sure he's so confident right now. Don't get me wrong, the match practice would have helped Makuru massively, but to get off of playing Monday, to play darts four days in a row like she did, would have taken some out of her. So a couple of days before she gets to the late side now. Oh, no, look, I still think Bo's favourite of what we've seen. I still think Bo's favourite. But I don't think it's as clear cut as as what you had it. Yeah. A scoring for what the most part that I watched, especially Tuesday and Wednesday. Tuesday in particular was ridiculously good. Her finishing was a bit of an issue at times. And to be fair, um, obviously, Carla was in the chat room on Monday, said, oh, Bo walks it, lads. Even he said when I was chatting to him on Wednesday, he was like, yeah, it might be, it might be a little bit more difficult than I thought as well for I think mean, <laughs> Makuru. <sighs> Could we potentially see Bo in the live league? Um, potentially, yeah. That'll be interesting. Right now, like this is and Danny Knopper is right up against it. Six trebles out of the nine mullet. to hut. The mullet against the thumb. It is indeed 7 4 win for Andrew Gilden. 11 darters to get over the line. Superb. From Goldfinger. Let's have a cheeky little look. So, a win for Janssen puts him bang in the mix for the match play. A win for Andrew Gilding puts him £250 behind 16th. I'd rather see Danny Janssen at the match play. <laughs> oh, I'm completely with you. <laughs> Just giving you some some numbers. Hmm. Right. 
over to the challenge tour. The final will be Evil Carol Sandercheck and Stefan Belmont. Belmont edged Nathan Gerben in a last leg. Gerben averaged 94. Wasn't enough, God. Interesting indeed, that one. I'm impressed by Gerben. He's getting better and better. More consistently, yeah. To, to do it back to back today as well. Yeah. Decent. I know as well. Not, I don't think it's this phase. I think it's phase three. Sebastian Bilowetsky will make his live league debut, Gob. Mm hmm. He looked pretty good today. Yeah. I'm massively impressed with him. Polish Darts is in a good place. I very much agree with that one. I think they're the next. Not superpower, but the next hotbed. Even Paul Nicholson a minute ago tweeted, if you predicted that final this morning, you're not only a genius, but a clairvoyant. It's the most Dan Dawson final I've seen in years. is very very out there isn't it it is and Danny Anson's so, ninth pro tour chat room who wins from here Will will put the challenge to a final up at the same time because that's just started. So that gives us some good decision. Send the check takes the opener gob. Evil Charlie is at it again. It's all data as well. <laughs> this does go to prove you should not bet on darts TK shots. Unless you're betting on James Wade to play Johnny Clayton in the final of the Week 8 Premier League. <laughs> oh, what a night. Late December, back in 63... Yeah, if we could keep singing that so I get it in my head instead of H's new song, I'd be much appreciated. <laughs> Sedler check making his move. Six starts to get rid of this gob. Seventeens first, please. He knows. I don't think he did. Should have got an eight. So, chat room, what are we saying? Janssen, Janssen. Where 
did you go for food, by the way, as well, Gob? Anyone else? Oh, we went to a green king. Yeah. Sorry. We get. I get this down, and it's one of the. Um, Gonna bore you about UK pub knowledge now, but um, much like weather foods, different tiers of pubs within a chain run different menus, and this is one of the right, premium okay. ones. So they do like you can get like a. I mean, they didn't have it, but you can get a um, tomahawk steak for nearly forty quid at a Green King pub. Sorry. So, yeah. Less focus on all the quick, greasy, get it done stuff. More focus on actual food quality. Nice. Like that. Nice. Big fan. Mm hmm. And it just so happens to be between my house and Poppy's house, so we go there quite a bit. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. A lot of love for Danny Anson in the chat room. Have to say, you guys have been with us from about half past one. Give yourselves a huge round of applause. Smashed it today. Uh, by the way, God, when we're done, I'm still going to try and set up that remote link between yours and mine. Yes. I might, I'll just have to stream you out, I think. It's easier. But to be fair, if I'll I, if I can set the link up... It's easy to use this. Okay. It's just the thing with StreamYard, we can't have a feature game, can we, is the thing? I don't think you can have two um, web screens, can you? I'll have a look. I'll see if I can share multiple screens. Yeah. It's just a window, technically, one of them. Tomorrow, I might, might get poisoned by the lakeside food. Last time I went there, it was horrific. I didn't say it before you've gone then. Well, see, if none of you see me again, you know why? I've been done by the food. More importantly, you were talking about match play race. Andrew Gildan's now moved into the Provisional World Grand Prix field. Oh, my. How have these two got to the final? Because they played better than everyone else today. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, they, they all have played really well. I can't argue with that at all. So there. No. No, not so. They've they've been they've been superb. Get on more then, folks. Stop milking it. Let's get up a bit. Has there been a full quota of officials in Barnsley today? I believe so. So some, some, some of the marking, I've seen a lot of corrections today that I don't normally see. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> Who's the highest seed any of them have beaten? Two seconds. What a great question. Um, so Danny Anson, Danny Anson beats Peter Wright, number four seed. 
Ratoski 13, Doby 21, Chisnell 25. Our Gildan beat Jose, who's third seed then, so Andrew Gildan wins that one. It Ross Smith, who's 22, Luke Humphreys 11, Rob Cross 6, the Souser 3, and Danny Knopf at 23. Uh, that Josh Gobbs hosting tomorrow. I'm not sure who with, but I'm here tomorrow. <laughs> Just me. Movement on the stream, Gob. Hello there. The, name, the, the names have disappeared. <laughs> well, I've just seen Danny Anson at 25, so your stream's behind mine. Lucky. Lucky. Did we watch Challenge Tour today? Not really, Jamie. Obviously, nothing was streamed of it. We've got the final going on uh, in the game that you can see in the middle of the screen right now. Uh, challenge tour number two. Uh, we, we've seen the odd bit on Dark Connect, but we don't watch it as intensely as we do the Pro Tour. A, there's too many boards and screens and a lack of knowledge of that depth. <laughs> Me in charge, scary, scary indeed, HJV. Especially if I'm talking to myself for seven hours. Eek. To be fair, I'll jump on from Lakeside at some point as well. Gilding has the dark scope. How big will that be? I don't think Danny can afford to let Gilding get out to a lead. <laughs> Teresa says, at least I can't disagree with anyone from my... I'm pretty sure I'll find an argument with myself just to keep myself occupied. <laughs> and let's be fair, I will probably get bored at Lakeside, so I will be jumping in. <laughs> <laughs> you got interviews to do and turn around, son. Don't be like that. That's right, I'm taking the big boy big boy Betsy up and the and my MacBook. Especially game one. Game one at the WF is a belter. I'm gonna have to have that one on the Yeah. Oh what uh, uh, what time does that start? What? Yeah. Oh bugger. And by the way, how is that first? Get people interested. Great decision. Nah. Not Saturday afternoon. That's annoying. Very annoying. We kick off at half twelve, don't we? Uh, who have you got this weekend? Watford. Not that it matters massively, but I also think it's the, the only game I'm actually going to be able to relax watching for like the next three and a half months. Do you not think Roy's going to come along and park the bus? 
possibly, but I don't think that'll matter. Their defence is shocking. Will Truce de Kong <laughs> is not keeping out Jota, Mane, Diaz, and then Salah and Bobby when they rotate on. Painful misses in the first leg is exactly the way to describe it, but Danny Anson takes the opener. And Carol Sedlacek is pushing on in the Challenge Tour event number seven. Final, but wait, but wait, Stefan Belmont. Oh, that would have been the moment, wouldn't it? I spent all this time doing Pro Tour streams. We actually get the Challenge Tour on, and then we would have seen a nine. I'm like, streaming the wrong thing. What a leg this is from Andrew Gilden. 140, 140, 170, 51 in two. And there's a very, very good chance that Belmont, who was on a nine darter, is going to throw more darts in this leg than Andrew Gilden just did to win that other leg. I don't know because it just does not hold and show the number anymore. Andrew Gilden just looks so awkward, doesn't he? Yes. If I actually a fan think of Dazza and don't like Gilden, he's definitely quicker watching the stream. Uh, mainly because Dazza's our class as a friend. Someone I've got to know really well over the last five, six years. Loads out in the street here cheering on Kilden. What a legend. Like that, I've never said any of these players aren't fabulous players, because they are. You don't get to a Pro Tour final if you can, can't play. Yeah, Pro Tour was fully marked today. Cool, yeah, it's right. It just seemed, seemed to be a lot of mistakes. Or a lot of corrections. Good leg from Danny Janssen. 2-1. Belmont and Sedlacek go for a piece. I'll go through the archives and try and find a good picture of Danny Anson. <laughs> Maliki. Hi, everyone. Just finished working, gilding into a semi final. Uh, no, mate, this is the final. The other game you can see on the stream is the challenge. Tour. What happened to Nick Forwell and Graham Hall? I don't know. 
I know Nick Fuller was in front and lost, but I don't know. Have a scrap. Please. Some drama. Nick Fuller played not Jason Lowe. Oh, was it? I don't know. I know they were in front. Good effort, Malachi, though. Good to see you, Paul. <clears throat> Anson very snatchy compared to Gildin's silky. There is nothing silky about Andrew Gildin's throw. He does seem to have a more deliberate release point. <laughs> so I, I didn't laugh, I promise. At what? Is this April Fool's the real game or a different channel? There we have it. We're not in, I forgot it was first to five, even in the final. I looked a bit, Stefan Belmont beats Carol Sedlicek in a deciding leg to win Challenge Tour 7. I think so, yeah. Got Williams after winning one earlier in the day. Shock. Have a look what that does to the challenge tour order of merit, shall we? Scott Williams top six thousand and fifty pounds. Jim McEwen two point nine K. Stu Wilson oh two thousand one hundred Evans two thousand and fifty. That win for Belmont was his first challenge tour. Prize money of the year. Right. Go on. I'm just going to put this in the chat. I can't use this image for our images because I've just it's, obviously don't own the rights to it. However, this makes Raymond Van Barneveld's shirt look nothing. What on earth is that? Can you fit any more sponsors on there? No. Eighty-one and two for Gildin to retake the lead with the darts. Reminder: the final is first to eight on the Pro Tour. Uh, God, I've, I've decided that the image is going to have to wait until the PDC send their media release out. <laughs> and I'm hoping there's a picture that's usable in it. Yeah. Because there is nothing. Do semi finals yet. Hang on, Stephen. Yeah. Where does that put things from Gerber? 14th on the order of merit, 11,000 at uh, 1,150 pound earned from seven challenge tour events. Just looking at the World Cup draw, girl. I don't like the fact they've done the draw when we don't know all the teams. I'm not a fan of that. Yeah. Me neither. 
I'm also incredibly annoyed that we couldn't have Saudi Arabia. <laughs> Us, USA, Iran, and Saudi Arabia in the same group. Like, get on the blower. We're like trade oil prices for football results. Three, three apiece. Apiece. Break, breaks a throw, holds a throw, you name it. We've had it so far. Look, the quality's not the best, but it's in, it's captivating. He says looking down at his phone. <laughs> so I'm just looking at something else. Would Janssen be the first player to win with a mullet for over 25 years? Yeah, just win anything. Yeah, fair point, Simon. <laughs> but that only affects the one in our group. What about the other two? Because he's still got Panama versus New Zealand and... Who's the other one? Where is Matt Edgar on the challenge tour table? Good question. Tenth. Tenth overall. Yes. Is this the move from Danny Anson, by the way? 96 left after nine. Not if this goes yellow. Janssen does move ahead for three. That's the break. And he is halfway to his first PDC senior title. Danny Anson doesn't choose the Grease Mega Mix as his walk on, I'll be fuming. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I got chills. Yeah, if he's doing that, he's also got a walk on with a leather jacket. Please. Can't even finish then guild in. So at least six from Janssen from 176. A bit of pressure. Great, was it from Gildan? Nansen leaves Wadey's den. Tops and tens. Oh. Has he missed the dart? Has he missed? Has he, or has he gone up, up, and then treble last up? Find out. 
in a number of moments. Janssen takes the leg. Let's have a look on stream now. Yeah. First dart is low, and that is the worst possible dart for Andrew Gildin. Yeah, it floats one over the top for the 100 last dart. Yeah. Let me see another list from Danny. Gildin, not done though. Showing a lot. You, 269. Uh, MVG got to the last eight. Last 16. 16, I think. No, uh, quarter final. Lost to Dane Oppert. Only a sixty gob. Is that a is that a mistake? <laughs> if this goes, yes. <laughs> um, Graham says went up nine die, yeah, but lost the match. But good signs from the wizard. There's been the odd moment this year, yeah. I love the um documentary thing the PDC did with him. That was really good. You can definitely see the Eddie Hearn influence, can't you? The more yeah. varied style of content away from just what's going on week in, week out on the hockey. Like, yeah. Go out their way to tell the stories of the dark players so that the fans engage and get yeah. more from them. This is what some Sky used to do very, very well back in the day. But something they don't do that well anymore. Especially, look, I get Premier Leagues and all that is tough, but the week long tournaments, um, like the Blackpool ones and things like that, used to be great shoulder content through the yeah. week. But that's very much died off recently. just a case of a quick montage and play it six times, isn't it? Yeah. A bit of emotion from Danny as he fires the 180 in, let alone the finishing. Oh, get a little, a little fist pump. The way he shuffled, but a little bit contained within himself. I'd have preferred a, a Gezi Roar, if I'm being honest. No, no one likes that. <laughs> I do. The way he shuffled is a gentleman way to celebrate. All good, thanks, Pete. Good to see you, Paul. <laughs> an excellent question. An excellent question. One I do not have the answer for. Yeah, we don't have the answer to it, but it's an excellent question. Janssen definitely coming back for tops, but under how much pressure? Enough. It's a single, yes. single for enough, enough to make this missable. Not enough to make him panic yeah. as such. Certainly enough to make this missable. 
yeah, you just start thinking. Oh, last start. Last big. start. No thinking. Yeah. Those eighty six uh, enough to make you think because it's only single single for ball, so you mm-hmm. should get an opportunity. Kings of Double Ten right in the bottom corner. And starts the leg one, two, five against the darts. Your your stream's slightly in front of mine. That almost looks as if it flipped off the flight into that bottom corner. That's what I mean. It could have could have easily flicked into the um double fifteen or e- easily. Mm-hmm. We are at Lake Well, as a as an organisation, we're at Lakeside Darts fans. So Phil will be there tomorrow and Sunday. I'll be here streaming the Pro Tour Select of the Day for you guys as well. Uh, Lee Boyce will then take the baton from Phil on Monday all the way through to the final. Phil will join him. And I'll also be in Reading next weekend for the Seniors Qualifier Seniors. for the World Masters. I will be in Leeds for the Premier League. And then back, and I will be in the hot chair hosting the Pro Tours next weekend. So it's busy, busy, yes. busy. Busy indeed. No live lounge this week, though, folks, Monday night. We know it won't be the same. You guys will have to find something to do for one week. That also means the week after is going to be a ridiculous show. Yeah. Because we're going to have... Two weekends of Pro Tours, a Premier League, a WDF, a World Seniors Qualifier. Anything else? A couple of Premier Leagues. That would just be one Premier League. Uh, oh, two, yeah, because we didn't do Burn. Maybe we'll skip Birmingham because we've done a Fallout. We'll just push the Fallout later. Yeah. And to be fair, it wasn't really that memorable. Apart from the final where Clayton was magnificent. It... Yeah, I was going to have Birmingham Leeds, PC. What's this? Seven? Uh, this is Pro Tour 9. So 9, 10, 11. 12, 13. <laughs> Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Is there six this weekend, isn't it? Or is it just is there five on is there just one on Sunday? I think so, yeah. So that'll be ten. Then WDF men's women's boys girls. Live league times two. Is it just two pro tours next weekend? Yeah, just Saturday and Sunday. And then there's no Euro Tour qualifiers yet, is there? No. Danny Hansen now one away then. He pings tops to move 7-5 in front and he will get three opportunities to get over the line. Three hour live. I think we need more than three hours, Maliki. Birmingham, Leeds, five pro tours over two weekends, five challenge tours just this weekend. WDF men's, women's, boys, and girls. Two days of seniors qualifiers, plus an order of merit qualifier as well, so we can discuss that. And two weeks of live league action.
that's not happening in two hours. Especially not when you're going to want question time at the end of that, especially after everything we'll have been through. <laughs> What were the WDF men's results from today? Nothing. They start tomorrow. I was going to say, none. None, I hope. Big moment for Gildin to attempt to save the match on his own throw. Forced Danny Hansen to throw it out and then effectively serve it out as you would in tennis. And here we go, Danny Hansen with the darts in leg number 14. Aiming to get over the line. For his says, first senior pro tour title. Nathan, is it actually? If it is, they haven't updated the calendar because it's not on there. So I just looked. Yeah, the eighth, ET six and seven qualifiers. <laughs> Door card holders. <laughs> oh. I'll tell you what, God, this isn't bad, is it, for someone that hasn't won a PDC title yet? Not bad at all. He's holding his nerve pretty good. He's 94 and 95 averages for two that have never been in the final. You can't ask for an awful lot more from these two, I think. It dropped off no. a little bit around six legs, but they built it back up again. Yeah. They both dipped at the same time. They both risen again at the same time. And yeah, part of the mullet jokes and the awkwardness and whatever else. It has been a very, very good fight. Must be good. And it's potentially over in three darts time as Danny Anson eyes that one two one for the title. Leaves twenty four definitely coming back for it. Here comes that chance, and Danny Anton three in hand at double 12 or anything in between for his first pro tour title. And it goes for the Dutchman. Just seven pro tours, he has won a title. Congratulations to Danny Janssen. Do you want to watch the dart at double 12? Because, God. Your first start to win could be nervy. No nerves at all. Superb from Janssen. Like he's been here and done that constantly all his life. And the mullet beats Goldfinger to the Pro Tour title. Big, big I mean, fan. Wikipedia does lie an awful lot, but no, you are right. There is European Tour qualifiers next Friday on the 8th. Ooh. Never a dull moment, is there? No. So there we have it, folks. Danny Janssen wins his first PDC title. Congratulations to him. Super stuff. Yeah, it was a decent yeah. final. Absolutely. Um, everyone, thank you very much for your continued support on these strings as always you're the reason that we do them again oh dan dawson on his own no sign of danny Hansen. dan's got two mics in his foot in his hand dancing away <laughs> this is great tv them cables are definitely going to get tangled as well No, it doesn't look like running an interview. <laughs> exactly. They went back to the stat screen. Now they've called it back again. Oh, what back. is going on here? What's going on here? Hands back. There's still no sign of Danny Hansen. 
And now he's disappeared out of shot again. They're running some adverts. Maybe Danny Anton will be back for an interview. Maybe he won't. Maybe God knows we, what's won't. we don't know. But what a um, way to end the Pro Tour. Like we say, guys, it's because of your continued support. And we carry on doing it. God will be in the hot seat tomorrow. I will jump in and out as well. We're not sure who else is going to be on yet. We're not going to lie. We are winging it at the moment. Um, we just need to, to, to get through covering multi-events. As, look, we're in the mix. We're doing it. We will get you all the content by hook or by crook. God, absolute pleasure, mate. I'll let you get back. No stream is finished. No interview. We've got the final slide. Danny Hanson will not be spoken to. <laughs> um, but thank you very much for your continued support. If you haven't yet, make sure you drop us a like and subscribe to the channel. The report will be on the website within the next hour. I'm going to go and write that up now. Gob's going to get back and have a great Friday with everyone else. We will see you tomorrow bright and early. Gob, pleasure as always, lad. Yeah, what he said. <laughs> get Emma Payton on. I'm not sure we can bring her up, Malachi, but... We'll, we'll see what we can wrestle up for tomorrow. Right. We have been Online Darts, and we will see you all very, very soon. Take it to the next level.